Well, for Provo, Utah, two 2 0 teams are going to meet tonight. A game that wasn't even on the schedule a couple weeks ago. Undefeated BYU against undefeated Louisiana Tech from Lavelle Edwards Stadium. It's college football all night on a Friday night. I got the ball. Y'all got the night. On the Bulldogs come back from 17 down. First down, Cougars with a big run. Touchdown, Louisiana Tech. Maybe the next great BYU quarterback. Touchdown. And BYU is not slowing down. He's put on a real show tonight. And it's caught. Touchdown. What good is a saint if you ain't got to send? What's good is Welcome to ESPN College Football presented by Ram Trucks on a beautiful night in Provo, Utah. The mountains. A great backdrop for our college football game. Louisiana Tech on the road to take on the 22nd ranked Cougars of BYU. A lot of enthusiasm around this BYU team, even with no fans in the stands here on this Friday night. So the Cougars, who have an argument for playing the best ball of anybody a couple games into their 2020 season. Hi, everybody. Dave Fleming alongside Andre Ware. Stormy Bonatoni down on the field with us as well. I know you like offense. Oh, I yeah. like offense. If everybody at home likes offense, this could be the game <laughs> for them. Is the, this is the game to watch. These two teams will put up some points now. They'll get after one another, but uh, it, 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 two offenses that are very fun to watch. Yeah, 48 points a game for La Tech, 51-plus for BYU. BYU's had a lot of standouts. I mean, they have been super impressive two games in, but maybe nobody has stood out more than their junior quarterback, Zach Wilson. Yeah, simply put, he's one of the best in the entire country. We're going to watch him play on Sundays. There's no doubt about that, but the kid is just flat-out talented. You, you want to talk about his game? He's gotten better than he was as a true freshman. Watch here. Rolling to his left, he's able to flip his hips and then throw a nice dime to the back of the end zone. That's squaring it up as well as you possibly can on the run, and it's just there on the money. Then you want him to do it from the pocket, right out of the pocket, a deep post route, right in stride and on the money. Guys don't have to wait long for the football with him. He can put it on you. Then you want to see his wheels? He's got those as well, Dave. He is the complete package at quarterback. Yeah, meanwhile, Louisiana Tech grad transfer Luke Anthony. He's been playing at a pretty high level himself. He has. Last week accounted for six touchdowns, five through the air, one on the ground. He is a guy that leads this high-powered Tech offense. All right, meanwhile, we mentioned if you had the schedule printed out in April, this game wasn't on it. For more on how this game came together, let's go down to Stormy. Yeah, Dave, this game was just put on the schedule about two and a half weeks ago, and so we asked Louisiana Tech head coach Skip Holtz about how you prepare for a team like BYU, given all that, and he said when he pulled out the scouting report this past Sunday, this was all he had. Just a blank sheet of paper. He said that he wished that he was joking, but that's just the reality right now, because under normal circumstances, he'd have a full scout report, personnel, uh, the players that were coming back, different staffers, all these different things, and they didn't have that. But he knows his team is ready and prepared for this challenge, and they're really excited for the game tonight, Dave. All right, Stormy, thanks. Well, it's college football in 2020. We're just happy to have a game on a beautiful Friday in Provo, Utah. La Tech, BYU kickoff coming up next. All right, here we go. Just about ready for kickoff from Provo, Utah. Beautiful night. The Cougars, the 22nd ranked team of the country, and they have been ultra impressive. Two wins against Navy and Troy. Okay, maybe not the highest level of competition, but I don't care who you play. If you play as well as BYU has, you deserve to be talked about for just outstanding performance thus far. So every game is another chance to evaluate this BYU team that doesn't have as many of those opportunities for signature wins because of the craziness of 2020. We'll talk a lot about that tonight. How do you measure the Cougars? They won the toss. They have elected to defer, so that means La Tech's going to have the ball first. Jake Oldroyd, who's got a booming leg, will kick it deep for BYU. Into the end zone for a touchback, so La Tech will start at the 25, and that means their grad transfer Quarterback Luke Anthony will lead the offense on the field for the first time. Uh, well, Luke, uh, interesting story how he got to Ruston, a uh, passing academy camp counselor for Peyton Manning's passing academy in June of 2019. So not this summer, last summer. Longtime starter for Abilene Christian. Put up big numbers there. 
And uh, Anthony coming off a week where he accounted for six total touchdowns. Yeah, he throws the ball accurately. He's really accurate on the deep ball. But tonight, he's going to have to show some patience. This BYU defense, they're going to go two safeties. They don't want to let anything behind them. He's going to have to take what they're giving, and that's checking the ball down. BYU big and strong up front on both sides of the ball. Long, uh, the two pre two previous weeks, only allowing five points, 69 yards rushing, only 96 yards through the air, and they can get pass rush with just their three interior defensive linemen. Yeah, they totally dominated both Navy and Troy. Uh, Troy may be a younger team on defense, smaller team on defense. Navy, you don't expect to be right. just totally pushed around the way the BYU did. Second down for La Tech, a little wide receiver screen, and that's a nice gain for a Bulldogs first down. Smoke Harris with the catch and run. And I just love the name, Smoke Harris. You better be a good football player to carry that name around. <laughs> better be fast. No doubt, but look for, look for La Tech to screen quick hitches, things of that sort, to get the ball out of Luke Anthony's hands quickly and kind of move the defense out towards the sideline. And then you'll see Justin Henderson, their talented tailback, go to work. Uh, you said it. They have a talented tailback. They have good wide receivers. They have some skilled players and a lot of time for Anthony. who dumps it short to Justin Henderson. The open field tackle stops him, but a gain of close to five. Yeah, they want to play top down, which means nothing behind this defense. Let's rally and make the tackle in front of us, and they don't miss very many. Well, Skip Holt's team will like to go fast if they can get into a rhythm on offense. A handoff straight ahead, and Henderson stops short of the first down, close to the 45. It'll be third and short. Yeah, it's a pace, day that is not like last week's Troy team that, that uh, BYU faced. It's a little bit slower paced, a little more a little methodical in their approach, but they can punch the gas when need be. This is, this is a fun offense to watch. No tight end. That's what I'm accustomed to. No, no tight ends. Let's throw this baby around a if little you, bit. If you just toss the tight ends off the roster, Andre's a fan. From a pistol-type formation, they hand the ball off and the tackle in the backfield. A lot. Going to be fourth down. They're just pinching from the backside. Peyton Wilgar has made yeah. a lot of plays these first three weeks for BYU. Oh, he's a hybrid kind of safety defensive back that they love playing him down around the line of scrimmage. And talking to this coaching staff, they said, hey, we love bringing him off the edge. He was big there on third down. He wreaked havoc on Troy last week. So now the punt. Jacob Barnes is the place kicker and the punter. Redshirt freshman for Louisiana Tech. Putting it altitude here in Provo, so he should have a fun night kicking the ball. Fair catch around the 21. That's where BYU's offense will come on the field for the first time. So the Cougars' offense, the defense has been powerful. So has the offensive unit. We talked in the open about Zach Wilson and all the things that he has done. The guys up front, they are a little shorthanded tonight along the offensive line, and we'll see if that's a concern at all for BYU. Yeah, James Impey, their starting center, is out of tonight's ball game. But the way this guy's been operating, just get him the football and, and let him do his thing. Ball, he doesn't hold it very long. Wilson gets rid of it quickly on the first play from scrimmage for BYU. And the tight end, Isaac Rex, who had his first career touchdown last week, a gain of nine on the first play of the night for the Cougars. Yeah, true freshman that's had to come in and, and really develop quickly because of the loss, the Achilles injury to Matt Bushman, the uh, the starting tight end. Alex Isaac Rex has really stepped in and done a nice job here early. Dad was a good, really good player for BYU, and they think his son is going to be as well. A little jet sweep action to the wide receiver. That's Gunnar Romney coming around from right to left, and he got stopped short. Romney has got some wheels. Came in in that same class with Zach Wilson and Dax Milne. There's a couple of guys that, uh, that have stepped in, played early, and now BYU in this offense really starting to reap the benefits of some young players now that are juniors or upperclassmen understand they're all, they've all played in the same system under Jeff Grimes, their offensive coordinator, and I think that's really why Zach Wilson has taken off. The big boys are in there for third and one. Handoff left side and a first down and more for the Cougars. Lapini Katoa, they've got two tailbacks who 
done a nice job in the early season. Coteau will see Tyler Algier as the game goes on. Well, the Cougars offense, so powerful. Time yeah. of possession first in college football. Close to the top in, in about every number. And here's why. Only one three and out in two games so far. So that means you're possessing the football. You're moving the chains. That's extra opportunities for Zach Wilson and this receiving core. They do a heck of a job. Yeah, one thing that you talked about leading into this game, week one was more about power. Week two, they were airing it out. They have been a big play offense as well. There's Gunnar Romney, who changed directions and gets across midfield for a nice first down game. And to your point, you don't know what's coming at you when you can run the football effectively and then turn around and equally as much throw the football the way Zach Wilson has. But Romney is their deep threat, and you get coverage pushed off. Now they're, they're smart. Jeff Grimes knowing, I can't get over the top yet. Let me just get a, get the football in a playmaker's hands and let him go to work underneath, and that's exactly what they've done. BYU's defense forced the punt. Their offense on the move. Still early in this game. Wilson on the move. Will throw downfield, and that one is caught along the sideline. Dax Milne coming off a huge game last week. Inside the 20 for the big game. Boy, last year, a thumb thumb injury, shoulder injury, just wasn't himself and took the offseason to heal up, shoulder surgery. I think he's throwing the ball stronger and more accurate than he, accurate than he has in his, uh, in his three years he's been on campus. Just amazing in his placement and his accuracy this year. I, I've just been so impressed by him. And again at the start of this game, so 39-yard gain. And it is first and goal. The ball spotted just inside the 10. Algier in. Wilson faked it to him and keeps it. Zach Wilson, the speed, and he dives for the end zone. Touchdown. Oh, what a fake. And I'm not sure the edge player for Louisiana Tech, but he went with a fake. It may have been Ladler, the safety, went down just one false step inside, and that allowed Zach Wilson, the edge, to get to the corner of the end zone. He is athletic. He can throw it to any spot on the field. He's accurate with it. I said as a freshman, as a true freshman, we'd watch him play on Sundays. I got beaten up a little bit after that comment. Yeah, it's kind of working its way towards that direction. I, I think in the end, you're going to be right. <laughs> because he's, nobody's playing better than this guy right now. Maybe, maybe somebody's playing as well, but I don't think there's anybody playing better than Wilson. And maybe you'd say that about Kalani Sataki's team as a whole. A beautiful delivery downfield, the big game to Milne. Set up the touchdown run for number one. And the Cougars out to the early 7-0 lead. Gorgeous sunset tonight in Provo, Utah, where the 22nd-ranked BYU Cougars go six plays, 78 yards, get the game's first points on the board. 7-0 BYU, not even five minutes in. So the Cougars will kick the ball off for the second time already. This time, maybe returnable. Maybe, yeah. Attack is going to try to bring it out, and that maybe wasn't a great decision. Wayne Toussaint stops short of the 20-yard line. So the Bulldogs offense will have it for the second time in this first quarter. Moved it a little bit in the first possession. The offensive line has been kind of a strength, giving Luke Anthony some time back there to deliver the football, and that's allowed Justin Henderson to do his thing. But they're going to need him, whether it's checking out of the backfield like he did on that first drive to just kind of be a check down or somewhere to go with the football. Skip Holtz now in his eighth season. We were talking to him this week. I just couldn't believe it was eight. It had already been eight years. Yeah, six straight bowl games, won them all. I mean, he's done a really good job in Ruston. I think Coach Holtz knows that he's got his hands full tonight. Hand off on first down, straight ahead run for Henderson across the 20. Yeah, they they got to gotta deal with a man child in the middle, the senior defense or the nose tackle in Kairos Tonga. He is playing some football inside for BYU. Number 95, keep your eyes on him. There aren't many players like him in college football. A little hesitation, and that was not the right decision, I don't think, for Henderson. Maybe he just had nowhere to go. Tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Well, it's it's uh, you can tell it's a well-coached bunch in how they disengage. 
from blockers. They're space eaters. They got good quickness, but the hands that come with it make you a special, special player inside where you can disengage and then find the ball carrier like they do as quickly as they're able to do. So third and eight for La Tech from the shotgun. A penalty flag thrown. Anthony took a hit as he got rid of it and kind of threw it up for grabs, maybe thinking he had a free play. We'll see if that's the case. Troy Warner actually intercepted the ball. Yeah, boys. Not sure if there was an offsides. We do have this issue in college football. They're working on it, but sometimes the whistles aren't quite as distinct as <laughs> we're, we're used to. One thing, you can still see the flags you can see <laughs> when the flags. they come out. Defense, number 99, five-yard penalty. Free play, third down. Okay, so they did not blow the whistle. It was a free play. It was an offsides on BYU. That negates the interception. It'll give La Tech a third down a much shorter third and three. Big Zach Daw getting a, a head start. Going to make it a more manageable situation here for La Tech in this offense. So Luke Anthony coming off a six total touchdown game. Looks right. Throws right. Got the completion and the quick tackle. Just enough for the first down. C.J. Powell. Point. I mean, he was absolutely just wide open, sitting in the slot. They, they packed the box, maybe thinking run, but nobody was in front of him. That's what we referred to as an uncovered receiver. And then all you need is three yards to pick up the first down. Just give it to him, let him do the work. Well, C.J. Powell did the work. First down, La Tech took advantage of the penalty. Anthony will swing it out right. Nice delivery with some momentum. Israel Tucker knocked out of bounds, but a good game. Yeah, he's finally been able to stay healthy. Has battled injuries through his career. He, uh, he's got some wiggle to him. They love using him in that role out of the backfield and as a changeup to Justin Henderson. That's two good backs for Louisiana Tech. Tucker alongside Anthony. That's a great play on first down to set you up in second and short. And what they like to do is stretch the field vertically. This is an opportunity to do it right here. Well, at least keeping the ball for a couple minutes, and they're hoping for more. The handoff to Tucker, and he got close. I think with the spot, he got the first down. You are right indeed. Now you got something cooking if you're Skip Holtz in this offense. Talked about the whole dynamic of him calling the plays and how it gets signaled in. And uh, his son, Trey, is... Obviously, the signaler, signaler now. <laughs> He's signaling and things, signaling <laughs> in things. Boy, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> signaling for his, his dad uh, now as, as he's false part start. of the staff. Offense, he did not give the signal for the false penalty. start. <laughs> penalty flag down. thrown. So that moves the Bulldogs back by five yards. Boy, when you come on the road against a, a, a team like BYU, you've certainly got to make sure you play clean early in a ball game. Momentum is everything. You got Lou Holtz, College Football Hall of Famer. Skip, whose name is Lou, but nicknamed Skip, out into the open field. Louisiana Tech's got a big game. Smoke Harris off and running to the 20, to the 10. Touchdown. What a great catch and run for Smoke Harris. And he left a little smoke as he made about two or three guys miss, changed directions, and came all the way across the field. When you're playing two high safeties, you're going to make sure nobody gets over the top. Well, you got to make plays underneath. And uh, Smoke Harris may, does that indeed, but can credit these, the receiving group as well for Louisiana Tech blocking out on the edge. You got to have some unselfish players if you're going to hit big plays in the screen game. Yeah, maybe Griffin Bear with the key block there. Extra point up and good. Well, Louisiana Tech, BYU's been so dominant in this early season. A sign that La Tech has come on the road and come to play. That was pretty dynamic from Anthony to Smoke Harris. Tie ball game. ESPN College Football is presented by Ram, built to serve, and in part by Allstate. You've never been in better hands. 
no actual fans, but a very distinguished group here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Maybe we'll zoom in on a couple of those uh, BYU Utah celebrities as we go along. <laughs> they put them in a good spot here inside uh, the, the stadium. Best seating in the house. <laughs> Why not? Seven to seven. Louisiana Tech with its longest play from scrimmage of the year so far to tie the game. 6.51 to go, first quarter. Certainly the biggest play that this BYU defense has given up. Without question. To this point in the year. Miles Davis deep to receive for the Cougars. Signals for fair catch. The BYU's offense will come out on the field for a second time in this game. Let's go back, Dave, and take a look at that touchdown. You need edge blocks, and Griffin Bear and Wayne Toussaint certainly going to do that for Smoke Harris. He picks up two blocks. Keenan Peely is going to take a bad angle, and he's going to basically block himself. And then Smoke just turns into, I mean, whatever you want to call it, refer to it as he makes Troy Warner miss, he makes Isaiah Kafusi miss, and then it's just a foot race that nobody's going to catch him. One of the faster players in this offense. Well, I tell you what, unselfish play on the outside made that play. Just 5'6", doesn't necessarily look the part, but he can move and he can play. Tyler Algier on first down for BYU. Straight ahead run for 10 yards. So a quick first down move the chains for yeah. the Cougars. Even Adrian Hardy had a block down the field. He did. Contributing in, the, in that run by Smoke Harris. Yeah, well, really impressive. That was a team big play. The catch for Milne. He's gang tackled toward the left sideline. Gain of about eight. Let's go down to Stormy. Well, you talk about that being such a team effort. When Skip Holtz came over to his offensive group, he was dapping up everybody that was the blockers first, then went up to Smoke and said, hey, way to make a guy miss. Uh, and for somebody who offensive coordinator Joe Sloan is one, of, said, is one of the most talkative guys on this team in Smoke Harris, he didn't say a word. He was just soaking in all the love on the sideline. A lot of energy <laughs> over here. Let the play do the talking. Algier turned that one nicely upfield for a BYU first down, close to midfield. I mean, short. I mean, just like that, here come the Cougars. They've got a little high-powered offense of themselves that they're not afraid to uh, to get in a, a slugfest with you and go toe-to-toe -to -toe in terms of points on the board. They can come back and get it as quickly as anybody in the country. You know, it's not just that no team has stopped them yet. They've, they've hardly been stopped on a drive through two-plus games. They're taking care of the ball. They're not committing penalties. Yeah, they can run. Big. They can throw. They can block. They're missing their two starters up the middle on the offensive line tonight. You wouldn't know it so far. Milne got spun down after a short game. Only three penalties all year long. And you mix that with not having gone three and out only one time. It's an offense. They don't stop themselves. They don't hurt themselves. They don't commit uh, the stupid penalties or turn the football over. It's just consistency, and it, I think it's in large part because of all the continuity that they have with the coaching staff, the offense, and the players playing together for now three years. The symmetry of 110-10 to 10 was ruined by the Smoke Harris touchdown, <laughs> but it's still a pretty darn big margin. That was well defended by the Bulldogs. That's going to be third and long. It's an excellent play by Ezekiel Barnett playing from outside in, and he's been steady. Long, versatile guy who can play in space and he shows you there very good blitzer as well when they decide to bring him off the edge well, think about the challenge for La Tech one returning starter on defense one and the the new starters are not fully healthy some of them are not here tonight that's hard to wrap your hands around 10 new starters 10 new faces on the defensive side and you don't have an off season in which to work with Wilson throws far right. The catch, the turn, and fighting for that yardage. I don't think he got there. I think they know, though, that they're going to go for it. The offense will stay on the field. That's why you throw the hitch route up top, something quick. He either picks it up or he's going to get very close to the marker. And uh, no doubt that BYU will go for it here on fourth down. Cody Epps, very highly regarded true freshman, played for modern day powerhouse in Southern California, made the catch there. 50% yeah, on the year, three of six. 
on fourth and fourth down situations for this offense. And they sneak it forward. The ball pops out and picked up somehow by BYU down the sideline, cutting it back inside. Gunnar Romney, the man on the spot. Now they, they have blown the play down, and they aren't signaling touchdown. And the, the Bulldogs think that they stopped BYU. So uh, the, the officials must have said ball down. Keep in mind, every play is reviewed. So they will definitely take a look at this. They will have to. What a crazy play that was. By rule. On fourth and one. On fourth down, the fumbler must recover his fumble in order to advance. Therefore, it is dead when it was recovered. First down. Louisiana Tech. Now that's a good explanation. Yes. That is the rule. On Excellent. fourth down, it's a little different. The player that fumbles the ball can scoop it up and advance it, but somebody else cannot. It just, it just comes out of there with a lineman moving, trying to reach, and the quarterback doesn't stay with him. So the ball comes loose from Zach Wilson. And keep in mind, we've, we, he's working with a new center tonight. So that could have a little bit to do with it in short yardage situations. Yeah, good point. The, the, the veteran, one of the leaders on this team, James Empey, is not playing tonight. We don't think that's COVID related, just injury related. First and 10, La Tech. So the Bulldogs maybe going to hang around tonight in this game against a team that's been a bully so far. Big hit along the sideline after the first down catch. Well, they're having to deal with something that they haven't dealt with in the first two games, and that's that's speed. Because La Tech has plenty of it, and they will spread you out, force you. If you're going to stay in base personnel, that means you're going to have linebackers matched against speedy slots. That's, that's to the offense's advantage. And I will go back to a point you made early in this game, and that is, at least at the start, up front, they're holding their own. So far, so good. Giving their quarterback some time to make those throws. Stretch run to the right side and the tumble forward into BYU territory. Very close to a first down for Tucker. A nice job of kind of holding leverage to allow Tucker to turn the corner. To your point, the offensive line once again holding blocks long enough for both Henderson and Tucker to turn in a couple of big runs. They get the first down, they decide to go fast. Four receivers left. Anthony looking downfield over the top. He's got a man open. He floated it up though, and the pass is intercepted. Troy yeah. Warner there to make the interception. The intended receiver, I'm not sure of the number, but he was open from the time the play was snapped, and I had to stand up because he was so open. Once he pumped the sideline and the, and the, the receiver turns up, it's Griffin Bear. He turns up the sideline. It, that needs to be knifed in the, into uh, the receiver's chest. Can't float it up and allow the, 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 uh, the defensive back to make a play on it. UFC Fight Night tomorrow from Fight Island in Abu Dhabi. Holly Holm taking on rising star Irene Aldana. The main event prelim start at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN Plus. Main card 10.30 Eastern on ESPN and ESPN Plus. To get ESPN Plus, go to ESPNPlus.com or download the ESPN app. First interception of the year for BYU. Troy Warner came up with it. Wilson pressured on first down. Penalty flag thrown. He completes it out on the right side. And that's Katoa up the sideline for a big game, but we'll see. This may be coming back. Maybe a hole by the big left tackle, Brady Christensen. Yeah, I think it's coming back. And I mean, Zach Wilson took Holding. a shot. Offense, number 56, 10-yard penalty, replay, first down. He's hardly been touched this year. Yeah, Clark Barrington, the left guard, they, they wind up getting him, but they threw it right in the area of Christensen. But you're right, he has been clean. It's because he's, he knows this offense so well that he, the ball comes out with quickness and accuracy. But he, he holds it here and allows B.J. Williamson to, to get, get home. I mean, it's a 10-yard penalty, but if you include the gain, I mean, that, that's like a 34-yard penalty yeah. for BYU to erase that nice catch and run. They give the ball to Coteau, and he just had nowhere to go. We call that hidden yardage. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yes, indeed. Coaches know it. I mean, they, they, they know all about hidden yardage in terms of penalties and gains and when, when, uh, when the ball comes back. 
Alan Walker made that tackle. Trey Baldwin, who normally starts at that linebacker spot, is out in the first half for La Tech because of a targeting penalty. So Alan Walker maybe getting some extra snaps tonight. Well, I tell you what, if you're Louisiana Tech, you got to be feeling pretty good about where you are right here. Second and long, second and 19. Don't give up anything big and then force third and long to get yourself off the field. Wilson throws the slant, and that one was stopped for a nice, modest game. Going to Romney. Boy, he is some weapon. 6'3", 195 pounds mentioned. He's the deep threat. We saw the speed on the fumble that he picked up and got himself into the end zone that went for naught, but highly touted coming out of high school, was a starter as a true freshman, has really cemented his his place in this within the program. I always like when I do a game with you and there's a really good wide receiver because your voice sounds like, I, I want to throw the ball to that guy. You, you know it at 6'3", 195, throw it into the area. Pressure comes, they get it to Romney, and Romney tried to turn it upfield. The open field tackle stopped him a few yards short. So that was well defended, I think, by design for La Tech. It's fourth down, and BYU probably is going to punt the ball away. You know, the, the, the thinking there, maybe catch him on the run where he can run for the first down out of a slant, but it's an excellent job of defense by Louisiana Tech, taking advantage of a gift by the with the holding penalty to hold and force a punt here. And BYU is going to be content to let the final seconds of the first quarter tick off. The first quarter that was not as dominant as the first eight of this college football season have been for the Cougars of BYU. Louisiana Tech, I'm impressed. we got a ball game. They have come ready to play. Challenge the 22nd ranked team in the country. So, La Tech on the road. BYU so powerful. 7-7 after quarter number one. Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by Ram Trucks as we start the second quarter in Provo. 7-7 is the score. Ryan Rico has been the most bored player on the BYU team <laughs> through the first couple weeks. Two games, two punts. Smoke Harris, who had the long touchdown catch and run for La Tech. That punt was Ooh, pressure. Close. And Rico got off a great punt. Fair catch signal inside the 20. So that could have been disaster for BYU. Turns into a nice... Well, the La Tech offense back on the field after a little frustration last time they had it. Yeah, you go back into the touchdown by Smoke Harris, and they got the blocks they needed, so they decide to come back with a similar formation, but they pump it. And if this ball is knifed in, Griffin Hebert it may, it may be in a foot race himself. He decides to float it over, and that's exactly what Coach, Coach Holtz is telling him. Knife that baby in. Don't put air under that throw. That's got to be thrown on a rope. That, that was a great setup by Louisiana Tech using the play that was the big gain for the touchdown to set up a different look with the pump fake, and they just didn't execute the throw. So Luke Anthony has been really good so far this year. That was a mistake, and it led to an interception. He faked a throw here and gets wrestled to the ground. That officially, I think, is going to be a sack. Looked like he lost a yard. Well, for all the reasons we described earlier, and that may be Tonga with a sack, they rushed three and they get home. Yeah. And it's because they can disengage from offensive linemen so well, get you moving your feet as a quarterback, and then here comes the other guy to clean you up. Boy, they do it They do it as well as I've seen it done to get pressure with just three men up front. They gave him the spot back at the original line of scrimmage, so if you're keeping stats, no official sack on that play, but a real good play by Tonga, the BYU defense, again showing that three-man rush look. Anthony in the pocket, and his time runs out pretty quickly considering he will throw it away. Sort of the same idea there. Yeah, three-man rush. You want to have Henderson in the backfield at that point in time because you, you, all you're going to do is bring a linebacker back into the box, right? So you still have him outnumbered five to four. Now you run the draw play. You run some screens. You run, you know, something that you take advantage of numbers in the box. But if you you're trying to throw against eight, Almost impossible. So third and ten, early second quarter from Provo. Anthony, plenty of time this time, and a lot of room in front. Still looking to throw. In fact, he's going backwards. A penalty flag is thrown. Pass is completed. Did he go over the line of scrimmage think, and come back? I think that, that's exactly what he did. And he had a receiver once he planted his feet on the other, no, other opposite field numbers. 
that was begging him to throw because the safeties had taken off already. Might have also been an illegal touch against the wide receiver. Uh, there, there could be two different penalties here. We got a conference with our officials. A hat's off, that usually tells me. A lot of times the hat gets thrown if a player goes out of bounds. He's got a receiver to his right, which is Adrian Hardy. When he stops right about there, he could just stop, plant, and throw it all the way back across the field. He was so wide open. I know that seems crazy, but he was that wide open, and I know that Luke Anthony has the arm strength to get that done. The line of scrimmage was the 18. It did look to me like he clearly got to the 19. There's maybe no even foul a little for illegal touching to the as the pass is illegal. Illegal forward pass offense number nine went beyond the line of scrimmage and return and threw it illegally. Five yards from the spot of the pass, lost down, fourth down. Well, David was talking fast there. In other words, the, the illegal touching, they picked that flag up, but the the over the line of scrimmage, illegal forward pass. And there's was. Hardy. As he plants his feet, there's Hardy. Yeah. He, can, he can make that throw before he gets to the line of scrimmage. Excuse me, actually, that's C.J. Powell that was uh, that was wide open. Well, whoever it was, it was wide open. It was Powell. <laughs> Those are ones that uh, in the film session tomorrow, Luke's going to be kind of kicking himself a little bit. Loss of down penalty. That punt pressured, but a nice punt with Milne going all the way back inside the 40. He'll turn it up and go out of bounds. That worked out pretty well for La Tech, but maybe a missed chance on offense. Tie game early second quarter at Provo. Well, we keep mentioning how dominant BYU has been through two games this season. How dominant? Well, in their opener on September 7th, they led Navy 31-0 at half. They ended up winning 55-3. Then they had to cancel their second game of the year, so they had a long layoff. Were they rusty? They were not rusty. They beat Troy 48 to 7, 664 total yards in that win that moved them to 2 and 0. That was last week. Now playing their third game. La Tech though has come to play. It's 7-7, a little slant to Milne who gets tackled at the 47 yard line, a first down gain of maybe 6. And the, the thing that you have to like if you're Zach Wilson and you have two guys that that will make plays after they catch the football. Both Romney, we've seen him go to work, along with Milne, who is just just dynamic with the football in his hands. I don't think there's any doubt that Kalani Sataki, who played at BYU, yeah. had a decorated career here, went on to play in the NFL, has been here five years. This is the best team he's had as the head coach. He may not. Well, I tried to get him to say it, but he wouldn't say it. But uh, I, I, uh, I definitely think this is the best group he's had. I'm saying it. Wilson, who juke move and went into a slide so I think they're going to spot him around midfield. There was a penalty flag thrown. Yeah, maybe a late hit and another 15 yards going along with this and an automatic first down. That's tough for the defense, I think. It was a quick late slide. It almost looked play, like he was going to go foul, head first. Yeah, face, face mask yeah. at the defense end of that. So that's not, that's not a bad break. That's, that's just a penalty. Down. Not, not even aiming for the face mask. You just, that's yeah. where you, you, your hands connect. Yep. He tried to let go too late. So add on 15. It was going to be third and short. Instead, first down, down to the 35 of Louisiana Tech. Mason Wake, sort of H back tight end, came in motion. Wilson with a fake and a rollout. And Wilson had nowhere to go with the football. What great coverage on the back end by the Bulldogs. And just kind of limited where he could go with it. And as he kept rolling, guys stayed with a man. And there was really nowhere to go. Excellent coverage. Just shadowing. And Wilson's looking at this point. And there's just nowhere to go with the ball. So it's second and eight. Even the total yardage to this point, pretty even. Under center, Wilson. Handoff, Algier straight ahead. Boy, he's physical, isn't he? He is. You talk about an athlete and a guy that is just what you want in your program. Hey, they need. They had uh, depth problems at 
linebacker last year, no problem. Let's switch Tyler over and play linebacker where he had 26 tackles. They need a depth at running back this year. His natural position is moving back, and he's been contributing this year. Uh, just, just a team player that will do whatever is needed for the team's success. Big, strong kid from Southern California, just a sophomore. He's got a chance to put up a lot of numbers at running back for BYU. Third and three. Algier behind Wilson in that pistol formation. They hand it off to Algier. Broke a tackle and gets the first down and much more down inside the 25 to the 22. Well, you'd think uh, Katoa would be the, the more physical runner at 6'1", 210, but Algier is 220 and kind of built a little more compact. And when they get in these types of so situations on third and short, just about a guarantee with him with the ball in his hands. I mean, it's not like Katoa is not a good tailback. Yeah. Two, two straight years, he's led BYU in rushing yards. That shows you the depth when you got two that, uh, and they're just about like that at every single position on both sides of the ball. So first and 10, Cougars under center again with the play fake. Wilson in the pocket, throws over the top, and it is caught in the end zone. What a throw. Touchdown. Carter Wheat, the third tight end for BYU. What a throw. I mean, the placement of the ball could not have been better. Either Carter Wheat was going to catch it or no one was. I like him looking left and then putting it in a spot where only Wheat was going to come down with it or it was going out of bounds. That is going through your progressions, and then it's having confidence in your arm strength. Extra point up and good. Carter Wheat didn't even have a catch this year, let alone a touchdown. Didn't look like it from that catch and throw. Man, what a nice play for BYU. Or the eyes looking coverage off, coming back to the big tight end. The corner, what a job by Zach Wilson and Carter Wheat. So that's the Monday night matchup, Falcons-Packers. To me, one of the great stories of the NFL so far has been Aaron Rodgers. Back yeah. to being Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I feel like at times I'm watching watching uh, his younger clone <laughs> with Zach, <laughs> Zach Wilson here. Some of the throws that he makes. We had one at the top where Aaron flipped his hips, was rolling to his left and threw a dime. Wilson did the same thing about a week or so ago. I mean, it's the, the release is eerily uh, similar. similar. Touchback. Well, we, we may get into that comparison a little more as the night goes on. There's a little pushing and shoving during that kickoff, but no big deal. Tomorrow night before NFL weekend kicks off, a huge game, maybe the biggest of the year so far in college football, our first top ten matchup. The Deep South's oldest rivalry, number four Georgia, number seven Auburn, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Those two teams will meet for the 125th we are getting ready to see just how good Georgia is. Struggled a little bit last week. And played very well in the second half, but you can't do that against an Auburn team. And yeah, will JT Daniels be the starting quarterback? Maybe that's been announced now. I don't know, but how will he play in his Georgia debut? Hand off to Justin Henderson for La Tech, now trailing by a touchdown again. Yeah, it's just you keep watching this and you're thinking you should be able to run the football against this three-man front. And yet they're so big, so quick, so strong, they get off blocks that it, they almost make it, you know, they make it tough to do so. Second and six, they'll hand it off again. Left side and just nowhere to go. Loss of the yard. Yeah, he missed a cut, right? It should have been inside. He decided to bounce it on to the outside. And a nice block thrown there. That would have given him, sometimes you just have to take the two, three yard gains until the opportunity presents itself to pop one. Third and seven. Henderson stays in and moves back alongside Luke Anthony. Those three, three rushers again, and one of them will at least cause Luke Anthony to change his platform. 
Play clock winding down, but they get the play snap, no problem. Swing it out to Henderson, and there just was nothing there. Isaiah Kafusi, well defended, a gain of a couple. It's fourth down. Well, El Bakri was the guy that forced the ball out. He's coming from, from Luke Anthony's right, pressing the pocket to get there. It's amazing to me that they're able to do it with just a three-man rush, and that is such a... Uh, a luxury for a defensive coordinator if you don't have to blitz and you're just rushing three and somebody's getting there at some point in time. So another punt. This one not quite as booming. Kind of off the side of the foot. Out of bounds. We'll see where they spot BYU. Getting the ball back across the 40. Still going at about the 42, maybe 43 yard line. A lot of traffic down there. 8.37 to go, second quarter. BYU up 14-7, and their quarterback playing well again. Hey, he has been the man tonight in terms of getting the ball out with quickness, getting into playmakers' hands like Gunnar Romney, accurate on the move to Milne, and then the touchdown run, showing you just about every aspect that you need to see from a quarterback. He can do it from the pocket off play action. He has been money. The numbers so far, he's 10 for 10 <laughs> for 122 yards. Not a bad way to start a game, is it? That one was <laughs> stuffed by La Tech. A pretty good way to start the game and start the season for Zach Wilson. Five different receivers. He's placed the ball in their hands already in that uh, in those 10 completions. Yeah, we told the story last week with BYU, but during the uh, shelter-in-place time where there were no team activities, he was making weekly drives yeah. of 10 hours each way to get some tutoring from former BYU great in Southern California, John Beck. He developed a relationship going back a little farther than that with Drew Brees. That's commitment. Learned how to study the game from one of the all-time greats. That is commitment, and when you have those types of resources. It's one thing to kind of have them, but then to utilize yeah. them and then put the work in. Hey, I'm coming to you on a Friday when I could stay on campus and do God knows what, you know, hanging out with his buddies and whatever. He's making the drive to go work on his craft and uh, and get himself better. And it started to show up uh, right away in, the, in game one. Third and seven. Under eight minutes to go first half. Wilson with time across the middle. Hit his receiver in stride. That's Wheat the tight end again. And a nice effort from Carter Wheat to get the first down. Well, that's a heck of an effort. He was short of it originally. And then the spin and lunge got him the first down. And again, just get it to a playmaker. He gets it to Wheat on the run, which that allows him to turn the corner and get his shoulders up the field to pick up the first down. Well, he knows when to put some velocity on it, knows when to take it off, when to put touch. First two catches for Carter Wheat, including a touchdown. First and 10 BYU into La Tech territory. Another play fake. Wilson stepping up. Now scrambling, will throw it, and it's knocked away incomplete. Let's go down to Stormy. Well, just to expand on your guys' thought about this not happening overnight for Zach Wilson, the coaches say he probably watches more film than they do. Jeff Grimes called him an absolute film nut, said he's the guy that you get a text from at 1130 at night saying, hey, coach, did you see that play? What would you think? And, and Zach said that mentality comes from a lot, so a lot the experience that he did have with Drew Brees, Dave. He said that learning from him was pretty life-changing for his perspective on football in terms of dedication, the way he prepared and worked, and he thinks of film study as his advantage other people maybe aren't doing as much of. Yeah, it's a good point. Thank you, Stormy. Handoff. He does have an incompletion now in this game. And you know what it takes? It takes a special relationship to make that call or send that text at night at 1130 to a coach that you've known for now the third year in a row. And I think that has a, a, a lot to do with his development and how he plays when you can... You, you build that special relationship over time. They got the ball snapped a little more quickly, and that was a good decision. Neil Pau with the catch well into Louisiana Tech territory. First down, and here comes the hurry up. They don't do it that often, but the quick tempo from BYU. Algier takes the handoff. And Boy, the strength. Surge ahead. He does have some strength inside the 25. 
But just to put a bow on that, when you just think about the quarterbacks that in their entire careers have been in, within, in the same offense, and now you're building, and that, that play right there is a perfect example. You're building on a foundation every single year and adding stuff to the offense that you know Zach has a, a hand in and he's comfortable with. Yeah, when Stormy was talking to Jeff Grimes about that relationship and the back and forth, uh, the example was sort of like, hey, coach, I saw, did you see this play from two weeks ago? I think we can do a version of that. And yeah. he, he sort of mimicked the enthusiasm in Zach Wilson's voice. He zips that one there wow. to the pylon, and it's caught for a touchdown, Gunnar Romney. My goodness. Doesn't hurt to have athletes like that on the other end of it, for sure. What a throw and maybe even a better catch. 23 yards. That was a high degree of difficulty. He really started to come on about the last third of the season, his freshman year, Gunnar Romney, and things got comfortable to him. I think he extends over the pylon. But what, did the, what about that throw? Let me just put it in a spot wow. and see if my guy can make a play. He may be just shy looking at that replay. His left foot might have yep. come down out of bounds just before. He extended for the end zone. It's possible, and it looks like they are stopping things. So I think they're going to review that. Only have a touchdown on the That's previous sick. play is under That's further sick. review. That's good, in a a good way. My my, what a throw and a catch! I guarantee you, this one might make. Uh, he's made some throws that may, may might make Randy Moss's list on Sunday. See if the first foot comes down. I think the right one comes down inbounds. Yeah, I do too. It's the left that. And he did touch the pylon, which if you touch that pylon before yeah. the foot is out of bounds, but I think the left foot hit out of bounds before that right knee. I'm in agreement with you. Touches the pylon. And this one may come down right at about the one. Or come back to the one. So they're taking a look. Jack McDonald, part of a mostly Big 12 officiating crew. We told you how good the kid was. <laughs> I mean, is it is the ball touching the the end zone? Is it even with the, the marker before the foot comes down? I don't think so. I think the foot hits there and then the ball comes on in. So it may be right around just inside the one. That's where it'll be placed. That's my guess, too. Sometimes these kind of plays, if there's not indisputable evidence to overturn the call, if they think it's possible that the ball crossed that plane before the foot stepped out of bounds. I don't know that you can tell from. Boy, that's close. I'm looking at the view here. You don't have that straight, exact down the line look right. to tell for sure. In the old word, indisputable. <laughs> we'll creep Not into one of this my favorite words, <laughs> personally, but <laughs> just because we have to use it a lot. Yep. That one was hammered home. All right, let's see. After further review, the receiver was out of bounds with the ball short of the goal line. Therefore, it will be first and goal at the one half yard line. Uh, first and goal. If I'm Coach Grimes, let's let's throw a back shoulder fade. <laughs> right back to Gunner. Let me let him let him go ahead and cap this baby off. Yeah, Gunner wanted that one. I don't blame him. It was a great play. Beautiful play. Go ahead and reward the kid. Slant. Give him something. He doesn't have his helmet on, so I'm thinking they're not throwing a fade to him. No, they're gonna turn around and try to get this one in with Algier. I think you're right. Well, remember the center and the right guard, maybe the two best offensive linemen for BYU are out tonight. They'll hand it off to Algier. He goes left side and pushes in. Touchdown. So it took him an extra play on the ground. BYU makes it 20 to 7. They are a high-powered machine offensively. Just gets enough push up front, and you get his momentum and strength. Hard to keep him out from about the half-yard line. Tyler owes Gunner one. 
he gets the touchdown. I would have been trying to talk him into it, to, <laughs> trying to talk Jeff Grimes and let's hey, let's throw him a fade route, something. Get him a cheap score down here. Maybe somewhere down the road, extra point up and perfect. So 21-7 BYU is still more than five minutes to go in the first half. Gunnar Romney. Yeah. I knew it. <laughs> still can smile. And BYU took him just one more play to punch it in for a two-touchdown lead. We may have created a monster last weekend. I don't know if you were with us last Saturday night. The BYU coaching staff, some interesting dance moves uh, in their win against Troy, and they're back at it tonight. That's, that's maybe, I don't know, that's more like a cheer as opposed to a dance. The dancing may come later. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, I was tuned in knowing that uh, we would have the game and trying to get some uh, early homework in. It got a little weird now last got... night as this game got out of hand. <laughs> you guys did a heck of a job. Touchback after the touchdown drive for BYU. Stormy Bonatoni down on the sideline. Well, Dave, I would certainly expect BYU to have more of that dancing later on in the game because uh, head coach Kalani Satake said that they were going to turn it up a notch in this game. And I think the best part about Kalani in general is that he's kind of the ringleader of this whole thing. Before last game, he was out there teaching everybody the cabbage patch because he said he was tired of everybody not having any moves. He's trying to teach these guys the way to live their life, and they need to have some dancing skills. So he's working on it. He was talking to us about all kind of moves, cabbage patch, oh, everything, running man. Uh -huh. like, wait a minute, coach is on it. That's how you know your team is rolling when you get time to teach dance moves. Little dump short, and what an open field tackle for BYU. And the guy who I think has really stood out, Peyton Wilgar, has been yeah. everywhere the first three weeks. Well, he's been everywhere in this game. You called his number earlier, and he makes plays in the open field. That's what they talk to us about. Number 95 in the middle, Kyrus Tonga. Troy Warner has an interception. He's played well on the back end. And that guy, Wilgar, you called him kind of a rover. They yeah. move him around. They ask him to do different things. And you got to have that guy. If you're just going to rush three, you got to have some special athletes at linebacker in that position that he plays. The pressure was actually contained that time and gave Anthony enough time to make the nice delivery for the first down, La Tech. Oh, well thrown ball there by Luke move the chains here and they've got to have we were talking during the break that they need a response a, a drive where it ends in points not even it may not they don't even need the big ones they just need to put points on the board uh, to to kind of keep some confidence that they can stay in this ball game uh, Maxwell that last catch now across the middle another completion and that's the weakness of what BYU does if you can get to the middle of the field two safeties high there's always a void in the middle and usually tight end slot but you got to be quick with your eyes and quick with the pull you know the pulling of of the ball and let it go don't uh, don't hinge because then you give a defender a chance to get back into play but that's the weakness outside thirds outside the corners where we saw the pump and go Griffin Abair made his first catch. He had an amazing catch to win the game in the opener for La Tech against Southern Miss. Anthony decided to run. Maybe not his total strong suit, but that was a good decision. He gets the first down across midfield. Just doing it well enough to, to pick up the first down, move the chains. That's all you're asked to do, and then hope for uh, a kick on the end of it, whether it's an extra point or a field goal. First time we might see some man to man here by BYU. Inside position, maybe some out cuts. Play fake. Anthony being pressured will throw. And he did take some sort of hit. And then here comes a penalty flag. I think that was a late hit. Wilgar was in there. Yeah. I think he had time to pull up. And he's arguing the call, but it looked to me like it was a late hit. Looks like Tonga was. Kind of voicing his displeasure in Wilgar after the hit. But he gets rid, clearly gets rid of it. He actually chops down and then goes low. 
And you'll see Anthony Personal look foul. at the official for the, the, the flag defense. and was able to Number get 49, it. Number 49, 15-yard penalty and an automatic yeah. first down. I mean, you're exactly right. He, he was not happy with his teammate. And that, that was an easy one. Was it the most vicious play of all time? It was not, but just no need. So that's 15 yards and Louisiana Tech on the move inside the BYU 35. And this is a nice response drive to the score by BYU. Friday night football in Provo. BYU the 22nd ranked team in the country. That throw zipped in there inside the 30 down to the 28 for the completion. And now pushing away from the play. And you get Tonga telling Wilgar, hey, bad idea, big guy, bad idea. That's a senior coaching up a sophomore. I have a tip for Peyton Wilgar, as good as he's been. Go ahead and take that. Don't make <laughs> Kyrus Tonga mad. Don't have that guy be mad at you. Take, take the coaching and take, take that lecture and then keep it moving. Say yes, sir. No doubt. Second and four. No flags thrown despite a little rumble after the end of that last play. Just about two minutes to go until half. Anthony flushed left, now squares the shoulders, and it's incomplete. You see, that's not as easy a throw as one might think, though Zach Wilson makes it look easy when he's rolling left, and just a nice little flick. It changes your launch point. You've got to square the hips, or the ball's going to sail on you like it did there for Luke Anthony. First incompletion on this drive. Big third down here. Might, I might run the draw play here, maybe thinking about it being four down territory if you can get close enough. Show pass and maybe underneath handoff to, to Justin Henderson. Not a bad call. They have field goal kicker Jacob Barnes, who's just a redshirt freshman, but he's got a big leg, has already kicked a 51-yarder. Plenty of time on the play clock. They fake the draw. Here comes Tonga chasing after Anthony. Penalty flag thrown. That's going to be a hold, so the pass is caught. But I'm sure this one's coming back. Yeah, Cody Russi there, two-time team captain and center and the glue of the offensive line. He's matched up with Tonga and spins him around. Tonga's asking holding. for the, Offense, the holding call right away. 10-yard penalty. Replay third down. He's, he told us, we got a chance to talk to Cody. He says, hey, I'm going to find out how good of a football player I am because I got one of the best in the country that's going to be over my nose all night long, right in the middle. And, I mean, he just gets a, a handful of Tonga. I, I just don't, I don't think there are many offensive linemen in college football one-on-one -on -one can block that guy. We'll, we'll be watching him, too. For a while. For sure. For a long time. He thought about going to the NFL after last year, came back. Pressure. Anthony throws incomplete. Boy, big. The holding penalty big in this drive. And you needed something on third down. This half of it to where you have a legitimate shot to pick it up on fourth down, fourth down. But I think they may may trot this uh Drop the punter out here. Well, the penalty ended up taking him out of long field yeah. goal range. Yeah. So it was it was a nice drive for La Tech. Their punter is their place kicker. There are not many teams in the country that do that anymore. Now a timeout. BYU. It's called their first time. BYU out called the timeout. They want to save clock. 30 seconds in late. And try to try to get a two-minute drive here with 143 on the clock and all their timeouts in their back pocket. Well, still a minute 43 to go here in this first half. Coming up on our AT&T 5G halftime report. Matt Barry, Joey Galloway, Jesse Palmer, our friends back in studio, going to preview number seven against number four, first top ten matchup in college football this year, and the virtual locks from Joey and Jesse. We look forward to that every week. I wonder what, what Jesse thinks about Zach Wilson. I, I imagine that he's, he likes him too. he's on your side. Yep. Yeah, he likes him. It's hard. 
There's not a, a lot to, to dislike, that's for sure. I mean, when you talk about his part, the parts of his game that might need work, he's worked on them. Trying to pin BYU deep, fair catch, but it bounces into the end zone. So, for the Cougars, they use the timeout to save some time, and they get the ball at the 20 with some breathing room and a chance to put points on the board when we come back. Well, now playing on ESPN, all kinds of stuff. Tomorrow, that Georgia-Auburn game, 7.30 Eastern, then UFC Fight Night main card from Fight Island in Abu Dhabi. Sunday, Game 3 of the NBA Finals, 7.30 Eastern on ABC. Monday Night Football with the Packers at Lambeau against the Falcons, all now playing on ESPN and the ESPN app. And look who's here among the uh, cardboard cutouts, not just John Stockton, but the great Carl Malone as BYU has the ball. Two-minute drill here toward the end of the first half. Carl Malone, of course, was the longtime Hall of Fame star for the Utah Jazz, but you knew, where did he play his college hoops? Uh, La Tech. Louisiana Tech. He's got the We Are La Tech t-shirt on for tonight. You knew Stockton wouldn't be that far away from <laughs> Just from a Malone, bounce pass right? away. <laughs> that was a nice delivery from Wilson. So two quick first yeah. down gains for BYU. Well, and they did exactly what they needed to do on first down. You get a drive starter going with a, the quarterback draw, and that, that kind of cranks it up to get them going. Wilson throws wide open nice along throw. the sideline to step out of bounds by Milne. Well, it took him three plays and they're immediately into La Tech territory. Well, this is where you earn your keep right here. So can you lead the team down in a two-minute drill and get some points on the board? And three positive plays for this Cougar offense already. Remember, BYU gets the ball to start the second half. And this would be a big blow for Louisiana yeah. Tech. They had the ball deep in BYU territory, a penalty. Ended up taking him out of field goal range. And now the Cougars looking to put an exclamation point on the first half. Shotgun snap for Zach Wilson. A lot of time. Throws and right nice. there. Another beautiful delivery to Milne. That's knifing one in there right along the sideline. Taking one time out. So they've got two left here in the first half. And don't, I don't know that they're going to need it, the way he's working the sidelines. They're going too fast. They've gone 58 yards in 30 seconds. And using that sideline as their timeouts. Can't execute it better than this. Still a minute, five seconds. As Andre said, they got those two timeouts still. Play fake. Toward the end zone. That's another knife right there for the touchdown. It's hard to defend. Split the defense. There aren't a whole lot of quarterbacks across the country that can make that throw. And I told you earlier, when you go too high and you're trying to play cover two, the weakness of the defense, the outside third, he just knifed it right in there. Safety can't get over the top. That's how the ball has to be thrown if you're going to make that throw. And Zach Wilson just showed you exactly how good he actually is. Well, and they got Gunnar Romney, his touchdown. No replay review needed for this one. Wow. It went too fast. <laughs> it, uh, uh, you can't do it any better than that. That was the 32nd offense. It took him 37 seconds to go down the field. 80 yards. Zach Wilson's 18 for 19 in the first half, and Gunnar Romney has six of those receptions for 80 yards. Holds the safety and then decides to just crank one out. That's amazing. Amazing throw. Nice outside release by the receiver, keeping himself away from the safety to give you a chance to make the throw. So that's about as well as you can coach it up. Yes, sir, coach, I understand. I think the head coach knows he's got something special in number one. The youngest starting quarterback in the history of this program. Think about all the great quarterbacks yeah. they've had at BYU. They've had maybe not as many as any other program, but close. I mean, they have had so many all-time greats come through Provo. What's amazing about the story, not only that, with the, that, that he has the talent. We obviously see it, but he works on it during the offseason, all week long, leading in the games, the film study. So he's just not sitting on talent and playing the, the game with just talent alone. He's, he's, he's given himself a, a, an extra chance or extra, a little bit extra to be successful on Friday and Saturdays. So still about a minute to go until halftime. 28 to 7 BYU. You mentioned the all-time QB greats at BYU. 
I mean, the list, we could have made the list yeah. longer, couldn't we have? Yeah, a good friend of mine, Guilford Nielsen. We go all the way back to 1975. He was an excellent signal caller here. Mark Wilson from 77 to 79. The great Jim McMahon leading the Chicago Bears to the 85 Super Bowl. Low-key personality. A little, little low-key. Shy. Yeah. And then Steve Young, Hall of Famer from 81 to 83. They have had some good ones. Robbie Bosco leading them to a national championship. Of course, my buddy Ty Detmer. You're in an exclusive club with him. Yes, indeed. Some good company. Louisiana Tech trying to mount something here at the end of the half. They get outside the 35-yard line. First down. That'll stop the clock momentarily. See if the Bulldogs can hustle into some points here. And they still have their, their timeouts. I mean, I feel like Louisiana Tech has actually played some decent football in the first half. And they're, they're down 21 points. They really have. And a couple of penalties have uh, backed them up a little bit and put, put a strain on them offensively. But, you know, here, they're kind of built for this. This is what they do as an offense. So this should be, you know, nothing unusual about their approach to this, uh, this two-minute drill with just 44 seconds left. Three timeouts, that's plenty of time for this team. So let's see if they can do it. On second down. I love it when you get linebackers <laughs> matched against slot receivers and backs. Let's see if he can find one of those. Over the top, over the middle, tipped up and almost intercepted. Oh, and he missed a read. He had smoke wide open over the middle of the field. I mean, smoke had come wide open, deep zone drops. You, you can't throw in the, in the covers. That's what they want you to do. You're going to see smoke right, right in the middle of the field. Just give it to him. He'll run for the first down to stop the clock, and you get reset. But trying to force one into coverage is where you get yourself in trouble, and you certainly don't want to leave Zach Wilson with any more time on the <laughs> clock, because 39 <laughs> seconds would be enough. We, we, we just saw it. They would actually, I think, go for it. They would try to score some more points. Why wouldn't you? Third and 10. BYU's got two timeouts. Anthony. Well, it looked to me like there were some more open targets. He'll run it and get the first down and step out of bounds. Nice job there. Kind of baiting the linebacker to hold as if you're going to throw what? it over his head. I, they, they spotted him. I, I guess he stepped. I thought for sure he got the first down, but I guess did he step out? I don't think there was a, any question that he picked up the first down. Yeah, that was it. Trying to hold the football out see the right foot step out at all. Wow. Yeah. Now, they got to take a look at this one. That That's, that's spotted. Previous play is under further review. Yeah, the bad end of the, the spot field there. Short of the line to gain. That just didn't look right to me. So they are going to take a look. I'm looking at the right foot. It doesn't come out, come down out of bounds until he's well after the first down mark. He's across the 45 to about the 47. Yeah, he had, he had to get to the 46, and I, to me, he clearly gets there. He's certainly not a full yard short. Ball's out in front of him. This, yeah. should, this should be quick. Should be a Louisiana Tech first down. Yeah, I mean, the, the foot, the, the right foot did not go out of bounds no. before that step. It's clearly a first down. I mean, it's a big call in that with 31 seconds on the clock. I mean, La Tech would have to essentially waste a play to make sure they get a first down if it's fourth and one. And then call a quick timeout. But I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. No, this this should be a first down. They're taking their time with it, though. Yeah. Maybe clock time on the clock? I don't know. Well, should was the operative word for you. This should not take long, but <laughs> somehow it is. I jinxed it. Back up, back up. 
After further review, the runner made the line to gain, first down, Louisiana Tech. Yes, they got it right, ultimately. That's what it's all in place for, is just to get it right. Well, to me, with replay, yeah. it's, it's especially in place to get an egregious missed call correct. And that's the one that it's like, how, how was that spot made? Yeah. And they corrected it. Okay, so you forget about it. First and 10, La Tech. He should have the middle of the field again. Getting pressured, though, and he's going to go down. It's unbelievable. Just three-man rush. And they're able to get home. Tyler Batty, a true freshman, comes in the game and makes Louisiana one of the bigger State. plays here in the first, the first half. Timeout. They like him. He's going to be a good player for BYU. 6'6", 261, right. right off the edge. Just a three-man rush, and he's going he's gonna to be able to get home against Lewis, the right tackle. That forces the timeout, the big loss for La Tech. And it's the second straight drive where the Bulldogs, I think, were feeling pretty positive about the way their offense is moving the ball. It was a penalty last time. This well, time it's an inopportune sack. If you skip holds here, maybe a draw play. And yeah. Let's get to the locker room without anything bad happening after a, after a play like that. So if the, if the draw pops itself and you get back to a manageable third down, and obviously it's worth spending the time out, but you don't want anything bad to happen with just 25 seconds left. Of course, why not take a chance? You're down 28-7, and you know BYU's getting the ball out of the locker room. But I get your point. So we'll see, second and 18. Pressure comes again from Batty. Anthony will run and dives forward to avoid the big hit. They will call their final timeout, yeah. or the second timeout. Because. Oh. Right. Was it La Tech who called the timeout? I think both teams were trying to call a timeout. <laughs> that, was, that was, you don't see that very often. Louisiana Tech has called their second timeout of the half. So they did give it, both length. teams were trying. Yeah, they did give it to. They gave it to the offense. Coach Holtz. So now it's third and ten. You can you can pick it Clock up. Operator, please reset the trying game to get clock a field goal here to, seconds, to go please. in. One, seven. Thank it's you. That run by the quarterback as good as a draw play. And yep. He eats some clock. They give him a, a second back to put it back to 17. But you know you get to third and ten. You can you can convert, and then maybe you have to spend your last time out wish to stop the clock and move into field goal range. That's really a story that you identified early in this first half, and I think when Louisiana Tech has had the ball, it's been the story of the game. BYU does not have to blitz. They don't have to send even four rushers, and they can still put pressure on the quarterback. And what a luxury, because you can put more guys in the coverage, rush three, drop eight, makes the throwing lanes tougher to find receivers, and you know, if you're Joe Sloan talking to Luke Anthony at, at the half. Hey, you got you got to take what's there. The middle of the field's open on a quick little sit down route in front of you. Take it. Well, we mentioned it. They do have a kicker who's got a big leg. Anthony on third down is going down again. Got hit from behind and driven to the ground. Guess who? Tyler Batty again. Two sacks on this drive. And now BYU's going to spend a timeout. <laughs> now that is aggressive with six seconds on the clock. You know, I am a, a guy that believes BYU. that you can never score too many points in the first the half. half. You are. Of a football game. Yes, you are. Yes. I mean, you can't get enough for me to like it. And if there's an opportunity to score, you score. There's a lot of coaches will tell you that they had a possession in the first half where we sat on the ball, and then all of a sudden it cost them and they wish they had a possession in the second half. Well, you had one in the first half and an opportunity to get points, and you didn't capitalize on it. They put a few seconds on the clock. Local kid, Tyler Batty, 6'5", 261, true freshman. Maybe, maybe. They have a history of quarterbacks. They have a history of pass rushers here, too. They've had yeah. a lot of good ones in the last couple decades, and who knows, maybe Tyler Batty 
is going to make an argument for the next great BYU pass rusher. See if they can come up with a big play on special teams with Jacob Barnes, the punter. And he was pressured. There was some contact. I didn't see a flag thrown, though. A short punt downed. And that should be the end of the half. They did not throw a penalty there, so that should be the final play of the first half. And it is. They fired the gun, which is really loud with no yes. fans in here. <laughs> 28-7, that's the halftime score. Zach Wilson just was awesome, wasn't he? Yes, he was. 18-19, 236 with two touchdowns. Just dropping dimes all over the place here in the first half. So the Cougars at home with a 28-7 halftime lead over Louisiana Tech. It's time to head to studio for our AT&T 5G halftime report after these messages. Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by Ram Trucks. Second half underway. The uh, ball kicked off, so BYU with a 28-7 lead is going to start the third quarter with the football. And Zach Wilson, their quarterback, will lead the BYU offense on the field. Zach Wilson was great. Andre in the first half. Dave Fleming, Andre Ware, Stormy Bonatoni down on the field. Uh, Zach was great. Everybody for BYU played well. Yeah, I think across the board, offense, defense, special teams, it was just an, almost a near-perfect first half for, uh, for BYU's football team. Zach, you know, you, you can't really even describe him because of how, the, how he places the football. He gets it done with his legs. It's, it's, it's really been fun to watch. How about his H-back hurdling a defender? Breaking tackles on the move. Mason Wake, what a play. When you get that type of effort from receivers on the back end of, of him throwing it around. Well, we saw Gunnar Romney and what he did in the first half, but that's some pure athletic ability right there, and the big fella willing to engage Defenders run him over, lowering his shoulder. Think they're not having think they're having a little fun. I mean he's 250 pounds. He's a fullback tight end, sort of like a hybrid H back player. That's <laughs> that tell you, is impressive. He'll tell you he's an athlete. Well, I, I'm believing him. Play fake. Wilson looking deep. He'll go deep and right in stride hits his man. That's Paulu for a big gain. Right away, BYU in La Tech territory. What a nice route by Paulu because he sold the post route, got the safety to bite inside, and then goes right back to the corner. The great protection by the offensive line to give Zach Wilson a, the, the time necessary to come all the way back across the field. So Wilson now is 20 for 21 for 277 yards in this game. Early second half, straight up the middle, a penalty flag thrown as Katoa rumbles inside the 15, we'll see. And that's usually right in that area where it's gonna be called holding. And it comes that fast, no doubt about it. Here in the run, holding. Offense, number 76, 10 yard penalty. Still first down. Well, and if you're being nitpicky, the uh, offensive line has, I think, made a couple mistakes for BYU. Now they are missing two of their best players, maybe their two best players. That's Harris Lachance called for the penalty. Right on the, the edge as Katoa was cutting it back. But tell you what, they, there's not much wrong that they've done tonight. They came into the game only three penalties all year, and I think they're up to about four now. Yeah, that's where you got you got to search to find the flaws right now with this BYU team. Off the back foot, still put it right in his receiver's hands. And some more muscle after the catch for Isaac Rex. You have to recognize when you have a special player. You see, you know, you, know, you see how he's able to change his launch point from almost a sidearm flick with his feet planted, just on almost on his off his heels. One, it tells me he's got arm strength, and secondly, tremendous accuracy. 
and, he, and it, it just doesn't happen that way in the game. That's some stuff that Zach Wilson's worked on in practice. I mean, I knew you liked this guy, but I can tell just listening to you how much you like Zach Wilson. There's Algier out in the open field, inside the 15, inside the 10, and finally wrestled out of bounds. It'll be first and goal, BYU. Boy, they have the balance offensively that every coach dreams of. A quarterback that's accurate, smart, gets it out, and then a running game and an offensive line that blocks it up, unselfish players on the edge, and then that's how you get plays like that. It's blocking on the outside by receivers that are in the game. They aren't catching passes at that moment. They have, they're having a block and, it, and a nice feel for when the run pops. 30 yards. I, I couldn't tell live whether it was a pitch forward or a, or a pitch back. It was officially a Whoa. rushing play. That was a big hit up the middle. Katoa got stood up, so second and goal coming up. I'll tell you what, Trey Baldwin's in the game the second half and making his presence felt. You mentioned it having to sit out the first half for a targeting penalty in last week's ball game. Well, he, uh, he has made his presence felt, my man. He, he's, he, he has waited to make that play. <laughs> That's a little built-up anger in there from having <laughs> to sit out the first half and wait. So now, with a couple extra tight ends, it looks like, in the game. I formation under center. Second to goal. Play fake. Wilson rolling, and he'll just cut it and walk in for the touchdown. If there's a weakness in his game, somebody needs to send it to me because I can't find it. All the film I've watched on the kid and mobility, it, it's all there. Every single ingredient you want, it's there. And then on top of it, that's where you go from good to great is that he studies, he, he, he builds on what he has. Just makes it look easy. And every throw looks easy. It looks effortless. But you can tell there's some, there's some smoke coming off the back of the ball when it leaves his hand. He's got four total touchdowns with barely into the second half. He's got an almost perfect night throwing the ball. The junior Zach Wilson at BYU rolling against Louisiana Tech. Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by Ram Trucks. What's the old saying? Like a freight train running downhill? How about we amend that? <laughs> like a giant plastic ball with a mascot stuck inside rolling downhill. BYU is looking unstoppable, at least against the level of competition that they're being forced to play with their schedule totally reworked in 2020. No team really has been impacted more schedule-wise during the pandemic than BYU, but they are certainly doing what they can against the teams that they are playing to impress everybody. 35-7 the lead, let's go down to Stormy. Well, as if you guys weren't complimentary enough of Zach Wilson in the first half, Kalani Satake was even more complimentary, just saying he's one of the best. He's gained so much experience over the last couple of years. He came back healthy, and now he's doing everything that you could ask a quarterback to do. He's really a special player making the big plays tonight, and he's going to do that for years to come. And he also said defensively, we're really trying to make, to make it hard for them to score those two sacks at the end of the half or why he brought Tyler Beatty here. And for Louisiana Tech, Head coach Skip Holtz just said execution has been our biggest issue. We're making two plus two equals four type of mistakes. We've got some young tackles, and they're showing their youth. Also, guys, expect to see Aaron Allen probably in the second series here. Okay, Stormy, a lot of news packed in there. Still Luke Anthony on the field for La Tech for this first drive for the Bulldogs in the second half. It was tied 7-7, and we were singing Louisiana Tech's praises. Hey, this team came to play. They're not going to be bullied by BYU. They showed up early. They did. And then all of a sudden, a fight broke out, and it was, it's been all in the favor of, of the Cougars. Yeah, I think another penalty against La Tech. Holding, offense number 64, half the distance, replay second down. That's really been the problem. Yeah. You know, un unfortunate penalties are when they have positive plays, something brings it back, bring, you know, and all of a sudden now they're they're fighting upstream again. And doesn't it feel like a long time ago we were saying, hey, the, the, the front 
on the offensive side for Louisiana yeah. Tech. They're holding Hold, their own. Holding their own against the, just the three defensive linemen that you see. And into the second half, into the first half, they were having a way with just that yeah. three man rush. That makes for a long evening for an offensive coordinator and a quarterback. Second and 15. They'll hand it off. And BYU was ready for that. Justin Henderson, though, strong nice kid, broke some tackles to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Oh, nice, tough run there by Henderson. He's a tough player. Good player. He works hard in the offseason. I know that. <laughs> Maybe we'll have a chance to show. Pushing, he, he, pushing the automobiles around. <laughs> well, it, it was pandemic time, right? You had to get creative with how you could work out. Justin Henderson got creative. It's Alvin Kamara stuff. Pulling Jeeps <laughs> with a squat rack on your back. Third and ten. Pressure. Anthony dancing around. He got away from it. Now trying to run for the first down. Gets tripped up a couple yards short. Well, he got him spotted at about the 20. And it looks like he was closer to the first down marker than where he was spotted. After he lunges, I mean, he didn't slide. He went head first. Yeah. I, 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 it's at least across the, the 20. I think that was a good eye by you. Uh, he may not have gotten the first down, but I think it was closer than they gave him. They're not reviewing that spot, though. Fourth and two. La Tech will punt. Fair catch. More good field position as if they needed it for the BYU offense. We'll take a timeout in Provo. Wilson, will he stay in the game? I bet he will. Dave Fleming, Andre Ware. We're in Provo, Utah. Disney's wide world of sports in Orlando, Florida. That's the arena where the NBA Finals is being played. And all you have to do is cut across the baseball field. And right there, <laughs> that is our compound where our production team is producing tonight's yep. game. And we, we haven't had any word whether any of our folks have walked across the way and snuck a peek inside to catch the uh, Lakers in the heat there in the fourth quarter. We're in the third quarter. BYU and Louisiana Tech 35-7. Dave Andre Stormy down on the field. That bubble's tight. I'm betting they can't get in there. I, I think that's probably true. <laughs> I would try, though. <laughs> Can I watch a minute? Make them tell you no. Algier straight ahead nice. run with a huge hole, and now we get to see the speed of the big guy. Down the sidelines, Tyler Algier. Touchdown on the first play of the drive for the Cougars. A lot of dancing going to go on tonight. It keeps on like this, showing you all that this offense has to offer. 54 yards. We knew he was powerful, and they love him in short yardage situations. Didn't know that he had that gear. Had yet to see that one. Nine rushes, 120 yards. He has got a burst. We talked about it earlier. We saw on the other side of the football. He was. Last year, had depth problems that linebacker moved him over there he had 26 tackles they move him back to running back to add some depth to that position the previous play is under further well, he does his house one we're checking well, to see i guess we're going to review whether he stayed in bounds and actually got there we've had our share of reviews tonight yes we have definitely in bounds like maybe that was the step that they're going to look at He's, oh. he's close, but you have to see one out of bounds. Hmm. Maybe that step, maybe. I don't know. That next one was a possibility, too. Yeah, I mean, I, again, it's like, well, are you sure? Can you tell from that look? No whites flying up. You got the side judge there watching the whole thing, and he didn't he didn't think he stepped out of bounds. Nope. I say let it stand, but I think it's gonna stand. I agree with you. 
I mean, I just don't know. It's real close. We can see that, but yeah, I, are toes you? in, heel is maybe extended over, but that still not doesn't qualify as out of bounds. Usually, when a call like this takes a little extra time, you start to think that they're worried about overturning the call, but also yeah. then they got to get the clock right, they got to get the yardage right for the spot. So that could be what's happening here. Well, it takes away a highlight play for Tyler Algier. Oh, they'll celebrate it and film tomorrow. They will. And still argue that he was in bounds. Yeah. I, I, the head coach has been spending some time arguing while the replay officials are looking at this one. And look, I promised myself this year, this college football season, I was going to enjoy the games and not complain as much about how long replay takes. Yeah. But it's my first chance to really do it this year. Replay has to be faster. You just have to do it faster. It's just I mean, not good for the game. Yeah, earlier in the game when they had an obvious first down, it took about this length of time when... It, it was, was obvious, obvious that it was a first down, that the ball had been misspotted. So let's, you know, we don't have to do things just for the sake of saying that we did it. Make the call and let's move on. After further review, the runner stepped out of bounds at the 31-yard line. It will be first and 10 at that spot. Please reset the game clock to 8.56, please. 8.56. And it is quite a ways back, that's for sure. So it's still 35-7. Mason Wake made a big block during that run. He still gets high fives Thank from you. his coaches. Still one heck of a run, and I'm with a side judge watching it the entire time. I'm, I'm still not convinced that he was out of bounds. But let's play on. Okay. We get to watch Zach Wilson for a few more plays. How many will it take for BYU <laughs> to get in the end zone? I mean, it is not taking them long as this game has gone on. That, that officially goes down as a 23-yard run. No touchdown. Handed off. Interesting play. And the cut upfield by Pau well, they, inside the 30. They will do it with either Pau or Mill. They come in motion. They'll quick, quick snap and give it to him on a lot of plays. And that just shows you the flexibility they have when you start studying them and studying them as a defensive coordinator. It's okay, there's a tell that they'll give it to Mill because that's what they did last in last week's ball game. Now all of a sudden it's it's number two, Pau, who's getting it. Yep. Keeping Jeff. you off balance. You know, Jeff Grimes, we've talked about him, their offensive coordinator. He's been around for a long time. Some of his offenses, teams that he was associated with, that is Katoa bouncing it left with the penalty flag thrown. Oh, what a cut by Katoa. I mean, what a nice read to bounce it out and then get vertical in a hurry. And they're going to have another holding penalty. Holding. holding. Offense. To bring this one Number back. Number 67. Ten-yard penalty. <clears throat> Replay, second down. We had, had almost a perfect first half from Zach Wilson. I think he missed on one, 18 and 19 in the first half. Yeah, still There's, only missed one. Still has only missed one. And he was perfect in the bowl game as a true freshman, 18 to 18, 317 and four touchdowns. Well, he's accounted for four touchdowns tonight. Two in the air and two on the ground. So... This kid's something else. No stranger to near perfect games, perfect games. He's pitching another one tonight. Play fake, swings it out left. That's Milne, spins away from one would-be tackler, not a second. And I like how he can change gears with his arm. You know, he, he, he uses touch on a pass like that when you need to, just enough where Milne can handle it and then get himself going. And then when he needs to knife one into the end zone like he did to, to Romney, in the first half, he can certainly turn up the speed. Yeah, that one knocked down. So that goes down as a rare incompletion. And instead of a long touchdown run, BYU is going to try a long field goal. They have a kicker who's got a huge leg, Jake Oldroyd. He told us his range is about 55 yards or so. This is going to be right about at that distance. Officially 45 yards. Jake Oldroyd, sophomore. Oh, well, we're going to have a do-over because uh -huh. the kick was good. However, Sitake is going to have a, a decision to make because there's an offsides here. It's going to make it fourth and short. 
Offside. Offside. Defense, Defense. Number, two. number two. Penalties decline. They'll take the points. Yeah, they went ahead with the kick. Old Roy made it, so just put the points on the board. Shoot off the cannon. Celebrate three for the Cougars. So a touchdown was overturned. Instead of the touchdown, they get the field goal. And BYU with a place kicker even who seems super reliable. Big lead in Provo. This season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, all state will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, all state. The moon straight through the uprights tonight on a gorgeous night in Provo, Utah, and gorgeous Perfect. on the field for BYU. 38-7, 7:19 to go, third quarter. They even line the moon upright. Perfect night. Kick return for the Bulldogs. The special teams coverage has been outstanding for BYU. We're talking just solid across the board. In every way. And, uh, well, Stormy teased this. We sort of knew this was coming, but Aaron Allen, the now second string, although he started the opener, sophomore, grew up in Houston, Missouri City, Texas, his uh, listed hometown, Aaron Allen, is in to play quarterback for the Bulldogs. He's got experience this year. 76% completion percentage on the year for Aaron Allen. Well, and even if this isn't a permanent change, Skip Holtz gets a chance to see his younger quarterback get some snaps against good competition, get some more experience. Well, I think it's an opportunity for yep. him to reclaim the job because, you know, you're putting him in with 702 left in the third quarter, which I would expect him to get the remainder of the snaps going forward tonight and it's an opportunity for him certainly he needs to think that way that hey I can reclaim this let's go down and put some points on the board and see yep. where what what happens at the end of the night I agree with you I mean we saw those numbers Luke Anthony statistically decent tonight but he missed some throws yeah second and nine So that short pass turns into a gain out to the 25, two yards short of the first down. Juwan Johnson with the catch. I like what he did there. Instead of trying to wait and make a guy miss, he got right up the field. Get what you can get. And on those quick screens, that's what that's what the receivers have to be disciplined enough to do is just catch and get vertical. Let's get exactly what we can get and live with it and come back on third down. Third and two. BYU showing blitz. Troy Warner, the safety, showing blitz here. We have not seen much of that tonight. Not at all. And they were coming with some pressure on the draw play up the middle for an L a Louisiana Tech first down. A nice call there by Skip Holtz, who is the, the play caller as a head coach. He saw the edge blitz coming and ran away from it and gave Henderson an opportunity to, to pick it up. We haven't seen much, much in, in the positive side of things in the running game for Louisiana Tech. You're right. Another handoff. This time bounced left. Justin Henderson. It'll be second down. Let's go down to Stormy. Well, guys, I chatted with Luke Anthony earlier this week, and he said that he has developed a really good relationship with Aaron Allen, despite the two of them competing for the job earlier in the season. Uh, and he said they grew a lot closer really quickly. They've been really supportive of each other, and I've seen that support on the sideline all night long. In the first half after Luke Anthony threw that early interception, Aaron Allen was the first guy there encouraging him, saying, on to the next one, man. All right. That's a way for the, uh, the grad transfer, the older player, to support a younger guy getting in the game. Second and six, handoff. Out close to the 35, that was Israel Tucker. You say that stuff when you mean it, but <laughs> down in your gut, you want in the game. Yeah. You know, you want to play. And if, if you're a competitor, you, you are want, wanting to play. Now he's got the opportunity to go in the game and 
just just move the chains is what all all coach Holtz is looking for is somebody to go in move the chains make the correct throws and take care of the football third and three BYU is showing some more pressure Another handoff, this time smothered by the Cougars. A yard when they needed three. Maybe should have pulled that one if you're Aaron Allen. Yep. Everything collapsing down inside. It looked as though he might have had the edge to pull it and, and uh, go ahead and keep the football, maybe pick up the first down. But when you're on this side of the 50, smart decision here is to punt it and live with the result, which is Zach Wilson coming back onto the field. Under four minutes to go, third quarter. Barnes with the fair catch made at the 28-yard line. This week's college football rankings brought to you by Capital One. Well, Clemson's still officially the number one team in the AP Top Ten. Alabama, Florida, Georgia, all from the SEC. Where's LSU? <laughs> they they uh, took a turn and went backwards. That was that was quick. Yeah. Well, was it, I mean, it was it was shocking. It was super impressive from Mike Leach in Mississippi State. It was LSU's very, got a lot of work to do. Very impressive. It was. KJ Costello throwing for was six thirty five. SEC record in in bad Rouge. in bad Rouge. Even without the normal atmosphere. There, they're still. I, I, as I'm jokingly saying that, but I did say that the first week that they might be the most overrated uh, sixth-ranked team in the country to start a season with all that they lost. Yeah. Oh yeah, I caught caught a little flack about that one, but we'll, we'll see what Vandy does. Vandy's got a good football team going to LSU this week and fought, scratched against Texas A&M. Uh, they almost beat week. Texas a yes. and that's why I think they have a chance this week. Now that would be something. Third down and short coming up for BYU. And at this point, the Cougars could decide the rest of this game is mostly for the ground game. Not like they can't move the ball on the ground. Got two big backs that can get it done. No hesitation in giving it to Katoa. Katoa had to break a tackle to get there. That was a tough earned two or three yards for a BYU first down. Tell you what, he shocks you or impresses you with his speed and the ability to change directions, cut, make defenders miss. And you give him a breather and then Algier comes in and I mean, then it's just, you, you got to lower your pad level a little bit. So there's the sophomore in for the junior. And just a reminder for people who are joining us late, I mean, BYU's down their two best offensive linemen tonight, their center and their right guard. Strength of the offensive line right up the middle. Wow, what Wilson a throw. Wilson just slung that one almost sidearm Ooh. style right there to Pau. That's on the move to a receiver coming back. And, I mean, it is thrown in the absolute perfect spot for Pau. Coming out of his break and the ball is on him. And you don't have, he doesn't have to adjust much to go get the ball. It is literally right in the middle of his two, the two on his jersey. Fourth catch for Neil Pau. First down, BYU. Back to throw. That a back shoulder throw right there for Gunnar Romney along the sideline. Another first down inside the 30, down to the 26. If you were wanting to put a, a highlight reel together for every throw a quarterback should be able to make or should make, I mean, he's put it, he's done it in less than, you know, three quarters of work. Back shoulder across the field, mind you. He's on the right hash, throwing all the way outside the numbers to the far side of the field, and that baby is on a frozen rope. He's had the frozen ropes. He's touch. had the touch throws. He's got the, the, not just the ball security, the ball handling, a little pitch back play, and Wilson 
was acting like he wanted to make a block. He tries, did. Tries to throw one. <laughs> I don't know about that. It's 38-7. to seven. Dax Milne inside the 20. I mean, you love watching him run around, and he is a tough kid, and he likes to do it. I'm Kalani Sataki, the head coach. I'm like, uh, Jeff, no more of those with yeah. him out in front blocking. Save that one for another time. Yeah. No doubt. Let's keep him healthy. The clock rolling, and BYU is going to let it roll all the way down to zero. That is the end of the third quarter. The Cougars in control, to say the least. The 22nd ranked team in college football. BYU, 15 minutes away from improving to 3-0 in this 2020 season. And they have knocked over, jumped over, ran over, ran by just about anything in their path this season. BYU up big. Uh, the big fella leading the way yeah. is the weekend BYU football team dance party. We've seen it every week already. <laughs> well, they are going out. Defense going off. Uh, a lot to celebrate the offense again tonight. Explosive, powerful. You got the running man going on the sideline. Yeah, a few Love other it. things, too. Algier to the 15. Oh, yeah. All right, now, what do you call that? <laughs> you got me on that one. <laughs> it's like what, the that Fresh Prince. That must be something uh, new that know, I don't know about. It's like a hybrid of the. Somebody pull out the Carlton on the sideline. Yeah, line. yeah, that's it. I'm showing my complete and total lack of <laughs> cultural knowledge. Yes, indeed. Boy, yeah. that is, that's one that just will last forever. Wes Wright, number 37. He's, he's becoming a dance star yeah. in college football. He, he likes to lead the way down there. I think it's just a way to keep everybody engaged and have fun during obviously a difficult time when the fans aren't allowed to, to be here. Timeout on the field. BYU burns their first of the second half. 38-7 Cougars lead. Well, this week on Sunday NFL Countdown, after coaching Peyton Manning, Big Ben, Andrew Luck, what does Bruce Arians have? For Tom Brady, his new quarterback, Randy Moss, ranks the best catches from this weekend's college football action. Kick off your Sunday morning with NFL Countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Andy Reid's cutout is here in Provo. He is a BYU alum. He's still very involved with the program. Got a pretty good one himself. Patrick Mahomes. Uh, yes, he does. Zach Wilson. Rolling, he got around that corner, showed a little burst to at least salvage some yardage there. Second down. You have to take your hat off to guys like Andy Reid and Kalani Sataki when you realize that you have a special talent at that position and allow them to play yeah. and not try to coach them in a box where you want them to play like the last guy you had. Let them use every you know every athletic trait that they have in the in the uh, you know, in the box, so to speak. Some some sidearm throws, no look throws that Mahomes has made. Hand off and a good tackle by Louisiana Tech. I'm glad you brought that point we, up. We saw it from Zach Wilson tonight. We saw a sidearm we did. kind of throw. Now we you did. get coached right out of that by some coaches. And, and BYU has built this program. Hey, we're going to play power football. We're going to control the yeah. clock. We're going to build and. I give Coach Satake some credit here this year where he has opened things up with a quarterback that's playing this well and allowed the offense to evolve. It's called trust in the guy that's that's under center and he's going to make the right decisions. You don't care how the ball gets there as long as it's accurately thrown and and, and on the money. Don't be stubborn. No here doubt. Comes pressure and Wilson recognized it. Streak straight up the middle, still spinning, dives for the end zone, touchdown. What a great run. His third rushing touchdown of the game. And that one took some skill. We are watching one of the best college football players in the country right now, right now tonight. I'm glad to be here to witness it. This young man is something special. They brought the pressure. He recognized it right away. Just watch how he skyrockets up everybody's... Uh, pre-draft boards five total touchdowns extra point good for the Cougars there was a penalty 
on that extra point Outside. try, I think against Louisiana Defense, Tech. Defense number 17, that penalty has declined. Declined that the penalty, so it's 45-7 to seven, BYU. Just a simple quarterback draw as he looks coverage off, and then I like the end of this where he's just lunging for the end zone. Third touchdown run by Zach Wilson. ESPN College Football is presented by Ram, built to serve. Well, another great night for BYU, full of highlights and dance moves and whatever else we're seeing in Provo. And a lot of the highlights have come from that guy. When you have more rushing touchdowns as a quarterback than incompletions, plus you've thrown for two touchdowns, You've had a pretty good evening. Yep. Time to just kind of sit back and have fun dancing with the rest of the guys. I do believe that will be the last we see of Zach Wilson in this game. Louisiana Tech will get the ball with 13.25 to go. And Luke Anthony is going to come back in the game at quarterback. It must have been designed for Aaron Allen to have a series in the third quarter and then go back to Luke Anthony. Uh, had they caught a little fire with yep. Aaron, Aaron Allen, then maybe that's a different, we're, we're singing a different song. So Anthony and Louisiana Tech back on the field. We still have most of this fourth quarter to go. I mean, look, I, if you care about college football like we do, Anthony's going to dump it short right to Tucker. The, one of the biggest questions right now that's developing in this early, strange, unusual 2020 season is how good is BYU? And how are we ever going to find out? Well, they have done some things to their schedule where they've added Du Boise and San Diego State. I mean, this was a team that had a really strong schedule lined up. But I, I think they're really good. I, I think across the board, offense, defense, and special teams. We've seen some of the weapons on defense. Yeah, it, it is big news this week. That one almost intercepted. Yeah. And obviously, the, the obvious is how good Zach Wilson yeah. is in this offense. And plenty of weapons, two outstanding running backs, an offensive line that was without its, uh, its kind of rock in the middle tonight with, it, with James Empey sitting this one out. It's a... Uh, he told us he had some depth at every position across the board, and it, it's, it's been obvious tonight. That depth we thought going into last week maybe would be compromised a little bit because BYU did have a significant COVID outbreak. Yeah. But a lot of that ended up being contract tracing as much as positive testing, and they seem to manage that well. A broken tackle leads to a first down for Louisiana Tech. Isaiah Graham, nice play. And they've had some some plays like that throughout the game just not enough of them to to really hold off BYU in that high-powered attack led by Zach Wilson but against the schedule that BYU has had to pivot to I mean because they are not they most of their games got wiped out when the the, the non-conference games and BYU's an independent every game for them is a non-conference game maybe a trip to Houston later here in a couple of weeks yeah. where they will you know face the Cougars yeah. on their on their home turf I mean that's a test you can maybe you can, you can maybe learn something from that because they've been sitting for a while and who knows if they you know they when they take the field this is a bye week that was in the schedule anyway so they're not playing this week by the time they get there who knows if the Cougars have played their first game yep. and you go in there and they're making first game mistakes you just don't know yeah you don't know I mean that, that was where I do think the, the add of Boise State and San Diego State, and that just got added, I mean, literally this week. Mm -hmm. uh, the Mountain West decided they're going to play football this year. They allowed their teams to explore some late season if they have an opening in their schedule. Matchups with BYU. I think the Mountain West worked closely with BYU. There's still some wiggle room in there. Yeah, I think it's possible they could find another yeah. game somewhere along the line. 
And that's and those are good. I mean, the, to me, that that's that that'll help if you're trying to evaluate BYU at the end of the year. Let's just say they keep doing this. I mean, they are bludgeoning their opponents week after week. It's impressive, that's for sure. I, when you look and see what they did to Navy in terms of limiting Navy on the ground and then doing the job they did to rush the football against Navy, then you knew that there was something there that uh, that you had to pay attention to. And then all of a sudden they come back the next week and they're throwing it all over the park. Yep. Anthony running on third down and he dives forward and I think he got the first down. Well, one Very official close. spotted him much shorter than the other. The spotting in this game has been strange to me. Yeah, they say you, must be, you must be reading my mind. It was right on the tip of my tongue <laughs> because I, I thought for sure he picked up the first down. I mean, I, to me, that didn't. The hole was across the, the yard to gain. So. Well, they get it anyway, going for it on fourth down. You may have some point you have to say, okay, strength of schedule not there for BYU yet. But the score in three games is 148 to 17. It's going to make you pay attention and then, you know, strength of schedule, but the way they're doing it. And if they keep doing it at this clip, it's going to force some people to pay attention. I mean, it could really help them. I mean, it sounds almost silly to say if Navy and the American win some games, yeah. if Troy has a decent year in the Sun Belt, if Louisiana Tech in Conference USA can get a couple impressive wins. And Boise start, gets rolling. Yeah. Yeah. San Diego State has a good year. Yeah. And then they catch him at the end of the season. Houston pile up some wins if they ever get to play. On the road at Houston would be a big one. It would definitely, definitely bode in their favor. I mean, it still seems like a stretch to be in the playoff conversation, but at minimum for a team that could be in the argument for one of the, the big bowl games at the end of the year. I mean, BYU has that look. Second and two. And they're having fun doing it. They are. I mean, he has gotten not only the players, but the staff, GAs, everybody has bought in. And that just shows you what patience will do for you. Instead of, you know, the pay, putting high, these high expectations on a, a young coach, allow him to coach a while and and let him get a, a couple of good recruiting classes in, and it starts to pay dividends. That's off to BYU for the patience they've shown. Dave Fleming, Andre Ware, Stormy Bonatoni from Provo, Utah, where it was 7-7 early in the game, and we thought Louisiana Tech, man, they got a chance to test their uh, pitch back and a throw from the wide receiver incomplete. Boy, that was a not just a one receiver route, but two. So he scans the field right, and then ends up throwing back left. Huh. Adrian Hardy. You, usually there's one receiver in the route that he's going there and throw it out of bounds. But he came all the way back across the field. And that's that's going back to his high school days when he played quarterback in high school. Making reads. Making reads on an <laughs> end around. Uh, tackle right around the line of scrimmage that time. Pretty cool to see that one. But if you've missed most of this game since it was 7-7, you have missed a show. Zach Wilson, 24 for 26, 325 passing yards, five total touchdowns. And he's not just throwing it underneath. I mean, he is spinning the ball down the field, across the field, outside the numbers, hitting guys on back shoulder throws from the far hash mark. 325 pass yards, 173 rush yards for BYU across the middle. Short of the first down, La Tech on fourth down. Got to believe Toussaint would have picked that, that up if he just allows his initial momentum to continue. He stops and tries to cut it back, and that's what held him short of the first down. All right, now we know he's not coming back in the game. <laughs> Once you put that thing on, that's it. That's it. Fourth down, Anthony going to try to run for it, and he'll get there. Maybe. Well, yeah. Let's <laughs> wait for the spot. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe. Yeah. 
time. He got the first down. It seemed like some were just as obvious as could be, and it took a review to straighten it out. It's tough to be an official sometimes. Under seven minutes to go. Well, tomorrow night, can't wait to watch that one. First top ten matchup of this college football season from Athens, Georgia, Auburn, and Georgia. College football primetime presented by PlayStation 5, 125th meeting on ESPN on the app. Watch that one. A&M's going to be tested thoroughly against Alabama. Uh, yes, they will. Be. That will that will be will be a better game than people think. They right. just got to be around in the fourth quarter. That feels like a big year for Texas A&M. I think it, it coming in before all, yeah. everybody started to opt out. Yep. I thought it was going to be this year's uh, story, like LSU, kind of come out of nowhere, senior quarterback. You're not playing at the level of Joe, Joe Burrow, but you know, a senior, nonetheless, a senior quarterback in his third year in the system. Very fair point that the the, the way this year has gone might mm -hmm. uh, this year might end up just being sort of a, a wash in that regard. Anthony will throw it out of the end zone. I mean, who knows? Can Mississippi State build upon that win? Can they be a real factor? Going to take a while, I think, for people to catch up with what Mike Leach is doing. And before you know it, we'll look up and it'll be middle of November and he's thrown for a gazillion yards on people and won a bunch of ball games. Everybody's talking about Mississippi State. I mean, I, I have to admit I'm sort of rooting for that to happen. I will look, the SEC has the best football yep. in the country, but for years you hear from fans, folks down there, hey, that stuff wouldn't work down well, here. I think that's why exactly why he's there and, and doing what he's doing. I'm kind of rooting for it to work yeah. just because. Florida looked really good in their opener, especially on offense. It could be a year where the SEC is, you know, not quite as top heavy, a little more open. We'll see. Still a lot of good teams. Some good football played in that conference. Third and goal for Louisiana Tech. Every single week you're going to have a yep. couple of matchups where you just, it forces you to sit down and watch it. Oklahoma's got to go to Ames to take on Iowa State and really try to save their championship chances. Skip Holtz came out on the field and called timeout before that play was snapped. Louisiana Tech, it's called their first time out of the half. So La Tech takes a timeout. We'll take a timeout ourselves, 45-7 BYU. UFC Fight Night tomorrow from Fight Island in Abu Dhabi. Holly Holm taking on rising star Irene Aldana in the main event. Prelim start at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. Main card 10.30 Eastern on ESPN and ESPN+. Plus. It'll stream on the app. And when I say rising star, I'm reading the card. <laughs> I, I just can't claim a lot of expertise. But it's a big event tomorrow night. Check it out. Anthony on the run and a nice throw into the end zone for the touchdown. Well, he bought just enough time to find Smoke Harris, who's in the end zone for the second time tonight. But just enough time to find him. Tough guy play from Luke Anthony. Smoke Harris has had a nice game. Yeah, he took a shot on the tail end of this and bought about the amount of time he could hold it to let Harris get open. And it's a nice job. And coverage and just finding a, a light, nice little soft spot. Extra point is good. That was a 17 play drive for Louisiana Tech. Something positive to take into next week. Yeah, could have been an even longer trip back to Ruston. Bulldogs still down big in Pro Bowl. Our week four Monday night football matchup, Aaron Rodgers and the undefeated Packers. That, to me, is one of the stories of the year so far in the NFL. Hosting the Falcons at Lambeau, 8 Eastern on ESPN. ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. Coverage begins with Monday night countdown at 6 Eastern. Andy Reid and the Chiefs last week on Monday night football. So impressive. 
Jamal Williams, former BYU running back, now in that Packers backfield. He'll be a part of that Monday night game. He's got the cutout here in Provo. They're still hoping to have some fans here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium, but right now they've had a little outbreak here locally, so they've cut that off. Here was the schedule as it was originally laid out. Utah, Michigan State, Arizona yeah. State, Minnesota, Missouri, Houston, Stanford, Boise State. That's a pretty good schedule, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and, and if it's the original schedule, it, uh, it has you talking some big-time football if they're able to run the table on that schedule, but obviously the readjust and I mean uh, even the army game got added and then that one had to be scratched so that was canceled because of COVID yeah, at this point you're just happy to play whatever schedule or, or have an opponent to play yeah. from week to week and that's where it's going to be it's just going to be really hard at the end of the year as impressive as BYU is it's going to be hard to evaluate them against teams that play their more normal schedules as they were laid out Baylor Romney in the game for the first time for the final five minutes. Got some time last week, five of six for 80 yards and 83% completion percentage. Well, that touchdown that Louisiana Tech scored, the first touchdown that BYU's allowed in a second half of any game, will pitch back to Miles Davis. Now, we saw this kid run at the end of last week's game, and he looked really impressive, so he's just a freshman. They've got some talent. There's no doubt about how how well they've recruited and put the pieces in place to, to be successful for a long period of time. Second to two. One final thought on the, the BYU scheduling stuff. The, the, the addition of Boise State and San Diego State, the, the only game before this week that they had been able to officially schedule mm -hmm. for November or later was North Alabama. That, that was it. And that was a game that was originally on there. So they were empty. So it's just critical that they've been able to add those two. Third down for Baylor Romney and his BYU offense. And who knows? We'll see as it goes along. Maybe they can find another quality opponent. There's room for one more. If I were them, I'd be on standby with every team in the Pac-12 when the no Pac-12 starts. And if there's a COVID postponement where one side is impacted and the other isn't, I'd be calling right away and saying, right, we're ready to go. Two days, we'll play. Now, you might not get a yes from the other side, but I'd at least be out there saying, hey, if, if you need a fallback plan, Pac-12 or yeah. maybe even Big Ten when they get started. They, they had Minnesota on the schedule originally. All of a sudden, something happens where yeah. a team on the schedule or within the conference can't play and you want to play this week. And there's, yeah. There, got a few days a to get ready for it. Over. Let's, let's, let's go. Tighten the chin strap. Let's do it. So a rare punt for BYU with under two and a half minutes to go. Smoke showing off that speed again. Penalty flags flying all over the field. Smoke Harris has had a nice game. Smoke is making a lot of guys miss. It's been that way since, since early in the ball game. A couple of penalty flags, though, and we'll have to sort things out. But he made the big guy miss who's on the punt team. Tonga. Well, this score looks During ugly, return, but I think Louisiana Tech has a chance to have a offense, good year in Conference USA. Return team number 99, 10 yard penalty. First down, Louisiana Tech. Not just all offensive highlights for the Cougars tonight. I mean, Louisiana Tech, they have a talented offensive team, and BYU's made a lot of good plays. Yeah, they, they, they got after the quarterback on the back end. Troy Warner had an interception just continuously getting the pressure necessary, controlling the line of scrimmage for those three big guys in the middle. And then at the end of the first half, Utah brought in Tyler Batty, Batty, who came up with two sacks just before halftime, showing you the, the depth that they have in the upper class, along with some freshmen that, uh, that are gonna play along, along with them. 
Hey, this is a talented football team from top to bottom. So Louisiana Tech maybe one last time with the ball here. And Aaron Allen comes back on the field. So the younger quarterback would get a chance for his second series of the game. Across the body throw from young Aaron Allen. Nice delivery. Fifty nine points on the board tonight. Fourteen's an explosion for a BYU opponent. He is came into the game only given only allowing five. Allen with his receiver right in stride. Nice delivery. CJ Powell across midfield. So Louisiana Tech not going to let up. They're going to try to score at the end of this game. Got a couple of. Timeouts here for Skip Holtz to put something together and give his young quarterback some confidence. Yeah, I don't think they'll be taking a knee. I think he would no. use those timeouts. Now flags thrown, though. False start before the play began. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number eight, five-yard penalty. Still first down. I mean, Skip wants him to go. Enjoyed our conversation with him this week. He's, uh, he's still as energetic as ever and talked about how when he got into coaching his, you know, with his dad, he was he's always uh, telling him, hey, let me know when, uh, when running, the, the running period's over because he, wants, he was so interested in throwing the football and he decided when he became a head coach, that's what he was going to do. That's the kind of offense he was going to implement. He's done a really good job with this Louisiana Tech program that has a proud history going back to Terry Bradshaw, the quarterback play they've had in Ruston over the years. Six straight bowl games, all of those wins for Skip Holtz. They shut out Louisiana Miami. Tech. Now, Miami was a different team last year, yeah. but in the Independence Bowl, and I don't think the Hurricanes were exactly up for that game. I don't care. They shut them out, beat Miami in a bowl game last year. That's the longest active bowl win streak of any team in FBS. And that's another team you got to kind of take your hat off to. After that kind of loss in a bowl game, all of a sudden Manny Diaz has got it totally turned around. One guy has helped. One guy, two really, the kicker two. and the quarterback. The Eric King going there. I mean, what a move for him, and so proud of the way he's playing. I'll give you the kicker, and I'll take the quarterback. <laughs> In that equation. Yeah, but uh, I keep in close Derek contact good, with, with Derek King, and I'm just proud of all well, get out. What he had to go through his, you know, his last period of time in Houston, so to speak, and I, I just just take my hat off to the young man, showing, showing some toughness. Lost his father this off season, and the way he is playing, he is playing with a chip on his shoulder. You uh, and he will always have a bond, have a connection. Yep. Yeah. Two of the all-time greats for your program, and now he's playing for a different program, and maybe he's never been better, although he had some really great, great nights. He had a 50-touchdown season where he accounted for 50 touchdowns in 2018. Pressure comes, Allen hit, and was it picked off? Yes, it was. So that should do it. The interception scooped up off the turf. Just tremendous pressure again. I think it was Max Tooley. Yeah, by this BYU front, able to get home, rushing just three. I mean, that is, that's amazing. They've done it all game. All night long. Pressure came, forced that throw. Nice pick from a linebacker. So now the Cougars can take a knee a couple times and end this game.
Well, uh, it, it is not going to be an easy question all year long. But if you're just going by bottom line results, who's been more impressive in college football than Kalani that's, Satake's team this year? That's all. Yeah, that's the only question that you have to ask when uh, when you're talking about BYU, considering BYU. How impressive have they have they been this year? And, and they have a quarterback. You you were singing his who, praises right from the start. Who is one of the best players in the country? I think he is, and I think he needs to be recognized as such. And I think throughout the, the remainder of this year, people are going to really find out just how special Zach Wilson is. The Cougars went down in the rankings after last week's win. I think this week they're going to climb back up again. The 22nd ranked team in the country. The final seconds tick off the clock. 45-14. Zach Wilson, another spectacular game. And a word from Skip Holtz for him as the two teams walk off the field. Well, they scheduled this game two weeks ago. And I, I, I think Louisiana Tech is thrilled just to have a football game to yeah. play. But maybe even back then, they didn't know exactly what they were getting into with this BYU club. Really, really impressive. Impressive. College football in this strange year to be celebrated no matter what. 148 to 24. That's the cumulative score in three games for BYU. Gunnar Romney had a big game. Tyler Algier was spectacular. Tonga in the middle. Some of the young defensive players played well. But it all right now is revolving around that guy. No doubt. And I think as the year goes and he continues to do what he's doing tonight, we're gonna he's gonna, he's gonna put his name in a lot of conversations. One, obviously, the Heisman Trophy. He'll be in that conversation as well. Well, we saw a little bit of everything from him. Yeah, we did. I mean, he started the game with a a nice touchdown run to really get himself going. The play action to be able to throw the football with accuracy from the pocket. Only his receiver's going to catch it or no one is. Another dime. Stretching the field from one side, one hash mark to the other sideline. And then a nice pretty play fake and walk into the end zone untouched. He, he did everything right tonight. So Zach Wilson could celebrate another win. Three years ago, the youngest starting quarterback in the proud history of this BYU program. He has grown up even since then. We saw the talent three years ago. It's kind of all come together with the hard work he's put in, especially this offseason to get ready for 2020. Let's go down to the field with his head coach and Stormy. Hey, coach. Oh, hey, uh, a quick a quick high five to Troy Warner. <laughs> coach. Yep, right here. Yeah, you're in perfect position. This was another huge win for your team tonight. Through three games, you've outscored teams 148 to 17. What do you credit the effectiveness and efficiency of your team the most to? Oh, the players and their hard work. We got great leadership on this team, and they appreciate playing the game, you know. So we were able to get a lot of things done today and get a lot of guys um, some experience that is going to be valuable for us for the rest of the year. When we spoke at halftime, you said Zach Wilson was one of the best, and he certainly showed it tonight. He had three more total touchdowns than he did in completions on the night. What's impressed you most about him? Well, if we give him time, he's going to make plays. He's a great player, and uh, you know we, uh, he'll give he'll be out here. He'll give credit to the old line and. And the receivers running the right routes, but um, he, he's a special young man, and I'm, I'm honored to be his coach. Thanks for the time, coach. Enjoy the win. Right, appreciate it. Go Cougs. To Stormy for great work again this week with us. Thanks to Andre Ware for having me here on this Friday night. Always good to be uh, side by side with you. I mean, we're, we're six feet, but we're in the same boom. <laughs> <laughs> so to speak, side by side. Yes, indeed. A lot of highlights. Too many to run through in 20 seconds for BYU. Final score, 45-14. They pound the Bulldogs from Louisiana Tech for Andre Ware and Stormy Bonatoni. Dave Fleming saying so long from Provo. BYU with another big win and another sideline dance party.